<laughs> hey, hey. Good morning, everyone. Yakuza Assassins in the house. What's happening? Jersh Radamas? Is that how I say your name? How you doing this morning? Let me get my face on um, this stream really quick. There we go. All right, what's everybody up to today? I'm just starting out. It is not even 9 a.m. yet. We've got reset in 20, what, 10 minutes? Reset in 10 minutes, but we still have to have a whole nother day before we get that increased drop rate on our legendaries, right? But we're ready for it. Just did a video last night, and I've been trying to critique my team for Venom. I've been making it better. I think... Um, I think it is better for sure, especially with the heels in regards to heels. What's up, Urgent? Good to see you. Good morning. My healing is so much better now in um, Venom. Tank is massive. Healing, I just made sure that my, um, what's his name? The little uh, Aquarian, that he had skill books into him. And now I've got goblin sets on everybody. No legendary gear, just epic gear. And then I, since my healing was so good and my tank was tanking so well with epic gear on nine, Venom nine, I, I, I brought out one of those heals. Took out one of those heals completely, brought in another DPS in the form of Arena to get more decreased attack up and to really make sure I could focus on the boss. Because you know how it is with Sigrid, right? Sigrid will fire on the boss for a while and then skip over to the little wisps. Uh, if, if they fix the AI and Venom, I'd be so happy. So now that I've got her in there and we're able to last, but it's, it's a little scary though, right? It's a little bit scary for the tank because we're only going with two healers, but we're getting more decreased attack up sometimes. But we're getting more damage in there. That's what I'm trying to I'm trying to kill the harpy without legendary gear on my DPS. But everybody should have some kind of come on. Everybody's got some kind of legendary gear by now. At least a few pieces. Yo, sniper monkey, my man. How do you feel about journey level? Uh the caps, you mean? I don't like the caps. I'm not a fan of the caps. Sniper, how you doing, man? What are you playing lately? How's the fam? Everybody doing well? You playing any kind of games? Actually, I I saw you stream. Was it Stream Raiders? I saw you either stream Stream Raiders or something else. Yo, what's going on? OP Gamer in the house. Yeah, man, just start my day out. Starting this beautiful, lovely day. If you guys haven't played Dragonair Silent Gods, make sure you go download it. Come and join us. It's right here at this official website. Boom, just hit that link, download the game on your PC, or go find it in the App Store, and you'll be able to join us. Always Modern Warfare 3 Beta. Oh, yeah, the, the beta is going on right now. How is the beta? Can I just play that on on Steam? Or no, no, the WoW launcher, the Blizzard launcher, I can play it, the beta right now? But I probably have to pre-order it, right? Maybe. Hold on, I got to sneeze. I'd be interested in uh, picking up my sticks and playing some Modern Warfare 3 beta, see what it's like. Not, 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 not till uh, later today, but yeah. Yeah, man, I'm all about to play in the beta. Especially if I don't have to pay for it. It's good. Well, what kind of good, man? Come on, what is good, good? Does it have the feeling of Modern Warfare 3? This is the same name, of the same name. <laughs> Why do they keep using the same names? It's so confusing. Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2, we've already had those, you know? Does this have the same feel as the old, the old, uh, what was it called? The battlefield, the uh, the big one, the same feel as Modern Warfare Three, the same feel as the old uh, Jesus Christ. What's the name of it? The name where you fight everybody. You know you have a hundred people. Uh, if it has that back to when we played, it's good. Okay, I'll have to try it out. If it's got tactical sprint, if it's got the good feel, the good guns, um, I was kind of hoping for something like Black Ops Two. Have you played? I haven't played Black Ops Two in a long time, but when that came out, that was fast paced action. You know, I think Black Ops Two was the one. Was it two or three? It was the one that had the uh, the siege with the car. The, the real rich home that had the money, and then you had the down part with the pools, then you had the up part up here with the uh, fountain. Multiplayer, it's faster? Okay. Uh, uh, you got me excited. You got me excited. I'm going to have to check it out. Rian stage 9 Venom today 15 times. Compare drops in a couple of days, and I didn't get a single piece of gear. You won't. You won't until the drops go up. But once you do, I've already shown you that. It's on, it's on my YouTube video from last night. Go check them out. Yo, James, what's happening? Yeah, go check out my YouTube videos. I got YouTube videos on farming nine. Did you see mine on nine? Is that why you're doing nine now? Because man, it's 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 so cool that I don't have to go farm curse. Grave of curse for this. Zombie mode in Black Ops 2. Yeah, I thought we I thought this is actually supposed to be a Black Ops, right? We just had a modern warfare. Yeah, we just had a modern warfare. This should have been Black Ops, right? 
every other year. Excited for Friday? What's going on Friday? Check out my latest VOD. Okay, I'll check it out. You're playing it on your VOD? Sniper Monkey? I'll go, I'll go check it out. What's going on? How'd the moving go? Oh, uh, good, good. She's out there right now uh, working out. She's off today and tomorrow. But she was playing the piano at 7.30 in the morning, right? No no awareness. No awareness at all. No no consideration for other people. Like, no. Um, very, very... Uh, I'm going to have to have my wife talk to her. Playing the piano at 7.30 in the morning on a Sunday is not acceptable. And then vacuum, vacuuming this morning at 7.30, not acceptable. Now, the thing is, I was up then, usually, no, but but nobody knew that. You know, I was laying in bed up. Normally, I get up around 8 a.m. Right at 8 a.m. is the latest I get up. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to tell my wife, no vacuuming, no piano, none of that shit until 8 a.m. <laughs> okay, it's not happening. My wife's sister just moved in with us a couple days ago. She's going to be staying here until March while the older home gets torn down and rebuilt into a brand new home. So she moved in with us uh, two days ago. Yeah, yeah. But she's off today, off tomorrow, so she's been out there doing some workout on the big TV. Some stuff my wife does on YouTube. Yo, Steel City. Damn, Steel City. What have you been up to? My man, it's been a really long time. How you been? What's Steel City been up to? Did you ever fall back on Raid Shadow Legends? Yo, check out all their gear. All their gear. Look, we got Epic Gear, Goblin Set. I've got her pumping out some additional attack, like all attack, all attack, so she can do better on her battle skill. Hopefully, this is a pretty good... You know, battle skills, heals are actually very impressive. Especially if they're all going to the tank. Because the tank is the one taking the majority of the damage. Whoever is getting hit right here by the harpy needs to be either this position or this position. Because you want the 3x3 three three heal to heal your main tank along with whoever is being hit by the harpy. I think it's my DPS right now. Arena is being hit by it. Then we've got uh, Quarion down here again with with gear just to make him cast his spells quicker. We can't do anything to increase his healing because it's based off of HP of the person he's healing. So we can't do, well, we can with the book, right? Just the book. Then we've got here, her, her here with all epic gear, but I don't think we have enough damage still. And sometimes my tank feels like he wants to fall over. But it's really impressive that we've got epic geared tank on nine and he's staying alive. Sometimes I've had him die because I'm only doing two healers now. My previous my previous video last night had three healers with one DPS. And if that DPS, like Sigrid right now, is in really good legendary gear, especially the gambler set or something, something that's going to do well for us, we can down it. We can down it with three healers, the tank, one DPS. But it's got to be legendary gear. This is all epic gear, so I'm trying to make it work with all epic gear. But you're going to be farming yay, right? And one day from now, the increased drop rate, you're going to be farming yay, getting amazing drops you'll get that legendary gear to increase our dps and then we'll come in here come in here and blow this away because now we can survive our tank can survive this it's so great and it's all due to that artifact i'm telling you it's all about that artifact that rare artifact i need to max mine out to 20 i only have it at 19 i didn't have enough resources to take it to 20 early bird uh yeah i guess so i guess that's what it is from stage nine now, you just got to get unlucky. Uh, stage nine? Yeah, I wouldn't farm stage nine right now anyways. I'd wait because you're guaranteed to get a piece on stage nine when you, when the increase rate goes. And sometimes you'll get two pieces. Did you see that video last night? I did six runs and I got 10 pieces of legendary gear total out of six runs. And then I had 14 fragments. No, 12 fragments. I had enough to make two more pieces. Or was it eight? No, no. I got eight full pieces out of six runs and I had enough to make two more. So I'm I 10. 10 full pieces out of six runs. You want to wait, man. You want to wait. So here it's a lot harder for Horus to survive with only two healers. I mean, he's got epic gear. What do you want? I mean, everybody's got epic gear on right now. What can I do? Three healers, one DPS. He's he's easy in here now. With that artifact, it's like he's not even taking damage with three healers. So I tried to bring Arena in so I could get some more damage so I could beat, beat out the clock, right? Because currently I can only get the boss down to the, uh, you know, oh, Horus is down. Yeah, currently I can only get the boss down to say, uh, this looks like dragon. This is like a, this is like dragon air. This is dragon air, man. Currently I can only get the boss down to a certain amount without, without that legendary gear on that DPS gear. I need that DPS gear to stay alive. Oh, where'd she go? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? But with this artifact, right? Not maxed out. I've got it at level 19. I definitely want to get it to level 20 once I get enough essence. Is that what it's called? Essence of creation. 
Once I have that, we'll be able to level it up because, man, he just stays alive. And then I could put on... Let's change gear out on Sigrid, actually. We've got some... We've got some legendary gear. It's not crazy legendary gear. I still don't think we're going to beat the, the clock, though. And then I tried to give her all attack on Hexandra, and then I'll give her the bow. Yeah, yeah, this is smart. This is actually really smart to get some extra damage. Watch this damage. Watch Hexandra's damage light up. I tried telling you in the banner artifact was better than a troll artifact a while ago. Yeah, because it stays on you. James, it's, it's badass, man. It's badass. Wait for King Arthur. This game is very, 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 very aggressive with player... Free to play, huh? What is very, very aggressive with player free to play? What does that even mean, my man? Level 25 and saw Siffy Duchess. What? And Rotos? Steel City went back to raid and saw that and then took off? Oh, TwitchCon? TwitchCon is coming up on this Friday. I don't know anything about it. I don't really... Sniper Monkey, I do like this stuff. And I play games, but I don't really... You know, I, I just, I pop on to do my thing and have fun with the game, enjoy what I'm doing, and then I just bounce off family, making YouTube videos, and I don't really, I don't really pay attention to what else is going on with, like, TwitchCon. I have no idea. I have no idea if there's a Super Bowl going on or a playoff. I just got no idea of anything in the world that's happening. Let me see if I missed anybody else's chat. Do we carry artifacts over from season to season? You do. You carry your heroes over and all your artifacts over. That's why it's pretty fun the next season because the next season we're going to have some power. This season we started out, we had no heroes. We started the game, we got our Traveler. We picked up a few more rares along the way. We fought the Child of Chaos in the beginning. And that's it, right? We started rolling for new heroes. Now we're going to have just your whole roster to be able to think about how you want to start the game. How you want to start the game with all those artifacts you have too. But remember, you got to be rank three to equip an artifact. So it doesn't take very long, but yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to work it all out and see what the affinity advantage is too, because they'll probably change. No, they will for sure change those around. Like it won't be fire and poison anymore. It'll be different. They're going to switch all that up. Does Ares do damage more than Sigrid on single target? On single target, yes. He can't do more damage than Sigrid. Just look at my DPS list over here in the recipes and you'll see. As long as there aren't people dying with debuffs on, that'll give Sigrid a boost to her ultimate, so that would outperform him then. If there's only one boss, not like this. Erich will not do amazingly well when there's other targets like this. Actually, I was playing him last night in one of these spots just to see what he would do, and he was hitting that other wisp with his ultimate all the time. It's five random hits, but man, I don't know. The AI in Venom is not good <laughs> against this Harpy. Not good at all. Use a... Uh, Iola instead of one of my healers. Nice. Yeah, yeah. If you use Iola, you're, you're pretty much wrapping up these whiffs along with decrease attacking the boss and then trying to get silence and stuns here on the wisp. She works out really well. I've heard a lot of people doing doing good things with her. I think he said the banner. What's going on with the banner? What did I miss? Like zero free shards for new players. Glad to see raid still the same. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with it. I haven't touched it in years. Like, not even loaded it up, so. What kind of job lets you get enough to spend... What kind of job gets you enough to spend 600k in under 90 days? I don't know, man. What what does? <laughs> what does? Sounds like a, an entrepreneur or something. Yeah, the AI is really wonky here, right? But here's what I was doing to increase my damage. So I was taking her... Since she's not being hit at all, this is a real cool damage increase. You take the bow, because the bow is just so good with damage. Now, any of her basic attacks has a 30% chance to proc 210% of attack. We've got attack percentage, attack percentage, and we got her in a goblin set, so her moves will be quicker. We've got attack again, and enlightenment. Really, I should switch this to attack, but I don't think I have attack. No, I don't. I don't have a single one with attack on it, so I went enlightenment to help out her battle skill. Now she's she's got a good attack, like actually as good as attack as an attacker, and she's running this bow, so this means her battle skill will be stronger, and she's going to do a lot of damage to where she's placed right now to the boss. This battle skill is going to be better, better for sure. She's doing more damage, and that bow is going to pop off to give her an actual DPS kind of slot, and then I've got Sigrid here doing damage, and then we've got three healers, but I still think we're a little short. Just because, oh yeah, that's right. We we're going to say, I was going to move her to uh, to legendary gear, right? Because everybody's got some legendary gear at this point. We even have legendary gear that the rats gave us. Do you remember that? I don't know how much it's going to give us. 
as an increase. I doubt any, honestly. This right here. If you went through the rats and you fought uh, Chitter along with Twitch, you got this piece of gear and you got this helmet over here with this piece of gear, right? But together, you're only getting accuracy and skill haste. So that's not really going to increase our damage. Have I even leveled up? Flat, flat attack? That's going to drop us. Look at this. Look at this legendary piece with flat attack dropping us by 405. Plus, we're not getting the 15%. That's why. Yeah, I don't have any good. I don't have any good pieces. How many good pieces to actually change her out with? It's so sad. Uh, maybe up here I've got a two-piece set. Let me see. I could go with two pieces. This is enlightenment. Why do I want enlightenment? Why am I cursed with enlightenment? Is that really all I have right now? Because I've only got 11 or 12 total pieces of legendary gear. Yeah, yeah, it's all enlightenment. Have I farmed any? Let me go see if I can even forge any. What's going on? Town Sword, how you doing today? Uh, you gave your account away? I should have given my account away. I haven't used it in forever. I could, I could give mine away. All right, a new day. How close are we to 23 hours? You can see it right there. 23 hours until the event starts with the otherworldly expiration. Exploration. And then we've got the legendary forge material drop rate increase. That's it. Tomorrow's going to be the day, guys. Man, I can't wait till tomorrow. How much bread does everybody have saved up? How much stamina do we have? 10? 10 120s and 860s. Not bad. Do we have an event? New event? Come on, give me something new. Give me an event with stamina. Ready for your night to be over? I hope it's over soon, my friend. Get home and relax. I haven't passed the rotation. I did. I passed the first rotation battle, and then I went to another one. There's a second one with like a big boss, and I and I stopped. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to wait till I get le legendary gear in a day. Why am I going to stress myself out when all I got to do is wait to get legendary gear Put all that gear on my guys. Reg legendary relics as well. Those relics are huge. Put that on my people. Go fight those three wave battles. And no stress. No stress. I'm all about the no stress plays, my friend. Look, okay, we can get one more. One more 60 to save up for tomorrow. That's it. I'm sure there will... You know what's going to happen? Tomorrow there's going to be a like a dungeon diver event. That's just like this for the ace. I guarantee it. Just like this one, right? Clear dungeons to win. Oh, no, no. I know there's going to be one because it goes along with the event that I've already shown from the test server. Haha, <laughs> okay. We are going to have one tomorrow. It's going to give us gems, stamina, and amethyst, right? Yo, Johnny Magic. Thanks so much for the prime sub. The love, the support, my man. Thank you so much. Six 120s and five 60s. Okay, nice. Zamex, you're doing all right. You'll be able to farm some gear. It, it's a massive, massive difference. With those drops, if you've already prepared to do eight and you're preparing to do nine, or maybe you're already on nine, because obviously if you use this kind of same team comp, but you have Varish instead of one of these healers, that's going to add to your damage, add to your survivability. If you have Zarloth to do damage and healing, that's going to help you out. So you could always sub out one of these healers for maybe a, an epic or a legendary healer you have and then get some more damage in there in these two slots, right? This one will will do the harpy. Target the harpy. She'll target the harpy. What was I gonna look at? Oh, let me let me run this. Let me run this to see how much damage our girl gets up to. Hexandra. Now that she's got the bow on, she's full on damage. She's ready to wreck the harpy. Let's see what kind of damage she could do. It's so sad with this AI. I really need to film this and get this into them and see what they're gonna do about this AI issue. Are they gonna do anything this season about it? I don't know. Yo, mobile gamer. I was talking to him this morning. He's uh, he's playing the game. Any anybody play Marvel Strike Force? I'll ask this when everybody else comes in because uh, my favorite guy is Yondu, and he wasn't in the game when I started playing. The Guardians were in the game, but Yondu wasn't in there. And I'm wondering if he if they did him justice. You got uh, Nesjinka, nice. Yeah, she's good if you have another Dauntless in there, doing all their basic attacks and firing fast. She's on my list. I've actually tested her. She's on my tier list. So go check that out over there for uh, DPS. Recipes, hit up that recipe list right there. And she is ranked up to number... Oh, did you see my new numbers for the list, guys? Did you see my new single target damage numbers? Dude, it's crazy. Hold on. I'm farming Grave of Venom over there in the uh, test server so we can level up some new things. 
What am I trying to show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me stretch this out a little bit. Man. Vakana? Do you guys have her? The poison girl? Vakana, you guys were telling me she does some damage? She does do damage. As long as you have another poisoner, she does some serious damage. And it doesn't even matter what the damage of the other poisoner is doing. Although, obviously, you want somebody that's going to do damage. Why bring in someone else just to enable your legendary? You need to have them doing damage as well. But, uh, yeah, she, she is blasting damage. And she does not work well with enlightenment, though. Which is weird. Like she didn't do anywhere near the same damage if I put her in enlightenment compared to crit rate critical damage. Okay, let's check her out right here. So when I did her numbers the other day, right here at the very top, she is the number one damage dealer as long as you have somebody else in there. Look at that damage with her, with Dench. Anybody, honestly, anybody who applies poisons. Every time you apply a poison when she's doing her ultimate, she will do this additional damage. So I put Dench in there with her with no gear on. Like, I didn't care about his damage. I was just looking at the effect that happens once he applies poisons when she has her ultimate up. And it's huge. Look at that. She's doing 1,176,000. 1, and look at everybody else below her. Even though Garrett will probably be up toward that if he's being hit. He's not being hit on the target dummy, so his damage is a little bit lower. But her with with another poisoner and then when i tried her out with an enlightenment set because i was trying out uh twitch as well right twitch is down here i was getting much better numbers with twitch with enlightenment of course because all of his abilities are like hugely impacted by enlightenment you can see that he does like 80 percent of attack three thousand percent of enlightenment so with twitch with putting on that critic rate gear just critical crit rate gear that we normally try everybody out on he didn't do well at all. He did 327,000. But then when I gave Twitch over that 270 enlightenment so he could do multiple shots on his battle skill and his ultimate would hit way, way harder, he picked up a lot. But her, when I did that as well with her, when I put on like 300 enlightenment and took away all her crit rate, it just dropped her damage. It dropped her damage by a lot. She was nowhere near the 600,000 even solo. When I put her with a whole bunch of enlightenment. But then when I put her back to that crit rate with some attack on there, she she blew up. Which is the normal gear that I test everybody with. Uh, she's the uh, mohawk looking barbarian crossbow holder. I can show you. I can show you. I noticed that you lose targets on the boss. Some of the fights animations, which causes the retarget of the skill. If I, if I manually do it, yeah, I guess we could retarget her if I manually do it. What's going on with that fight back there? They're still fighting. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. I don't want to manual fight any of my any of my fights at all. You know, I mean, right now we've got we're on nine. Everybody's got epic gear on. Everyone, even the tank, which is crazy. And Horus is never in danger. It's it's, it's great. It is great. I did a video on this last night, but I. I fine-tuned my healers last night after I did the video. They're all in goblin sets now, right now. And Quarian, the guy in the back, he's got skill books in him so that he's even faster with his moves. He's the only one with skill books. But you see right now, you saw Sigrid just fired to that left harpy. We could have this. Like, honestly, it'd be so easy. This is going to be so simple when I have legendary gear, DPS legendary gear on my Sigrid. And... Even if she's dumb enough to, to hit the other wisps like she's doing right now at the halfway point, we're still going to take it down. Legendary gear on Sigrid, and then if we get attack legendary gear on my uh, Hexandra as well, she'll pull it down. Hexandra's at 237,000, which is pretty damn good for a healer with the way we've got her dressed up. But we need to, we need to pick up 500,000 somewhere. We need to pick up 500,000, which, which won't be that bad. Farm, I'll farm eight a little bit. You know, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at being able. I'm just happy we can do nine like this. Otherwise, the whole plan was to take your people, farm eight, get all that gear drop on eight, take all that gear, legendary gear, equip all the heroes that I showed you how to do Grave of Curse on six, which I can do seven and eight. I can do eight now. I've done eight with legendary gear on the test server. And But you have to manual it. And the sets over there are a tank set and then another set to where you heal yourself by 20% of your max HP whenever you do your ultimate. I don't really need those sets right now. What I need right now are all these damage dealing sets. And then I want to go over to get the legendary runes from the 
ancient battlefields, and the heretical runes. And then there's some really cool gear that I want in Grave of Rot once all my guys are geared out. I'll worry about that tank gear later. I feel like I just don't need it right at this moment. We need to find an auto team for for Curse 9. Something like some, some kind of cool auto team. So many characters, I don't remember all their names. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Oh, you want to know who she is? She's the Poison Legendary with the crossbow and the, the Mohawk. Did you find her? But she needs another poisoner in there. Somebody who will drop some serious poisons on the target that she's attacking when she does her ultimate. And then again, don't go high enlightenment because it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't work, man. High enlightenment was nowhere near her with high crit rate. I don't know why, because this is derivative damage, right? Isn't it derivative damage right here? Yeah, 40% derivative damage. I tried to go all four derivative damage like this, and it just uh it wasn't as strong, which is strange because the marked person gets this derivative damage whenever whenever they get hit so maybe a little mix of both maybe if we go high attack and and enlightenment but yeah she's pulling it down as long as you get another poisoner in there she will pull it down do some crazy single target damage yo kim in the house is she epic no she's right there she's a lego i keep getting legos but i can't level them up well, I leveled them up on the test server. That's where I do it. Because I have pretty much unlimited stamina over there. Not really unlimited, but I've got a lot. <laughs> I got a lot of stamina on the test server. So I go over to the test server. I try everything out. I make videos over there about everything. And then I know then to go and use the resources on my main account. Like, I know then it's safe to do it. That's what's so great about the test server. If you ask me to test somebody out, I can do it. I can see how good they are or how well they'll perform with some other heroes. And then you'll know whether to use those resources or not. The hair on the side and bald in the middle. What? My look? What is that? Stu, what do you, what, where was it at? What do you think about the look with the hair on the sides and bald in the center? Yeah, yeah, that would be green mad. That would be me if I grew out my hair. What do you mean? My wife would not accept that. I don't even think I'd be able to accept that. My hair is so thick there, like so thick on the, the sides with the, the fryer tuck. Why, who has that hair? She doesn't have that hair. She's got a smooth head of hair, that'd be nice. <laughs> Go back to my early days before I started losing it at 30. What's your focus on free to play? What would I miss? What's, I know you're focusing free to play teams, but you have you tried Garius, uh, two healers, two DPS? Have I tried that? No, I haven't tried that. I haven't tried that, but you can try that. I mean, obviously, if you see this working, then you know to bring them in, right? If you had Garius here with two healers, two B DPS, easy, easy times. Actually, I've tried two DPS, like I said here, and I got it to work fairly well. Just sometimes he'll go down with this gear. Like I had, uh, I had her in here, this this team, which was working out pretty well at times. But sometimes he takes too big a hits and still falls. I do need to get this up to 20, which will give me 2% more defense, 3 more percent HP, and a little bit more flat defense. That might change it. That could make the difference because right now, oh, you know what? Let me give myself some. Don't I have some stew? Yeah, I got a lot of this stew. Let me try this defense stew and see what's up. What did she, what was she rocking? Accuracy? She doesn't need enlightenment. She was rocking maybe this so she could get some more damage in. Like even more damage in. But she does need accuracy. She She's, uh, let me give her this. She needs some accuracy. And then the decreased defense will help us do more damage too. Uh oh. Everybody, everybody's missing gear now. Let's give her this with enlightenment. Attack and enlightenment? No, let's give her like, more attack. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's see if uh, Horus can hold it down. Come on. You only got two healers, little man. You can do it. I know this is the hardest content in the game, but you got this. Got this. You leveled up uh, a legendary summoner that summons the big summons guy. Okay. Char. Shalatar Char or something like that. Do you know uh, what helps with summons health? Just your main health will help with summons health and defense, but they're not always the tankiest. Are you trying to tank here? 
because a summon will not tank the harpy the harpy is is the hardest boss to tank out in the game so yeah it's not the right place to use that guy <laughs> not not the harpy anywhere else is okay but not here it's probably gonna get blasted horse Alexandra, iola and Megan, plenty of time. Yeah, yeah I bet. With, with Iola over there, where do you where do you put her? Do you put her kind of down to the right so it messes up this Wisp that does the decreased defense? That way she'll hit the Wisp and the boss. I've leveled mine up. She's actually leveled up on this account right here because I'm going to use her in Trials and I'm going to use her in um, three wave battles and stuff. So I've got her leveled up. I actually have Garius and I have Furbath leveled up on this account as well. My main account. But I don't use them. I only use them in three battles and I'm going to use them in pillars later on, but I got to get to the, to the level 10 bosses and do videos on the, on the level 10 bosses for everyone, how to get past each of the 10 floors or the pillars and how the bosses are when they are just bald in this internet. What do you call that? Old man professor? No, no, no. That's the friar tuck, right? That's the bird, the bird's nest. That's what you, you call it. The, you call it the don't do that, man. Shave your head. What about Platinum Knight Shield? Would that be better than Troll Banner? I don't uh, like the overall stats. What's a maxed out Platinum Knight Shield like? Of course, that's an epic artifact, but what's what's its maxed out stats? I don't have it. Well, do I have it maxed on my... Uh, I might have it maxed over here. Let me check over here on uh, the test server, and I can tell you. I don't think I have it maxed, but I can... You know, you can scroll over there and see what the max will be. I think is who you mean is awesome. I use him in most content. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He does a lot of damage. He'll get that increased damage to the big, the big hulking pet. And then whenever he casts that again, it does an AOE, right? That, uh, that summoner is actually a really good damage dealer. But if you have more summons out, doesn't he get a stronger? He'll get up to like 125% extra damage on him with that fear barrier, which is basically what he's called. Like... That hulking thing's called a fear, fear barrier, or the skill is. Uh, I had to I had a band teacher. Yeah, yeah, I figure a band teacher sounds like that's somebody who would who would keep on to that, you know, who wouldn't let it go. <laughs> Reminds me of a mop. <laughs> oh man. It says you take less AOE damage. Yeah, but that's only going to help you when the harpy does this move right here. The second move, right? It's not going to help you with this last move where it hits even harder. All right, that move isn't too bad. That AoE-ish type move is not bad. This move is the one that hurts, right? That's the big one. That's the one where you need a lot of HP. You need a lot of defense to mitigate that damage. So I wouldn't use the shield. This rare one is absolutely the best, man. You're getting flat defense. You're getting defense percentage, and you're getting HP percentage. I don't know of any other artifact that will give you so much raw stats for a tank. Unless you're going into something like the legendary category and then you get like 60% additional defense. You know, the legendary ones are, are massive. It doesn't even matter what their effect is. They're just massive on their own. Like I've got one here on Urgander on my test server. Where is he at? Uh, and it's total stats. Maxed out level 20 are 7,710 HP and 60% defense. That's a lot. And then it has a special effect there to do this burst thing that, that lowers the damage of the target. But it, uh, Scarab, Epic gives 75%, uh, 45% defense. I mean, that's pretty good. It's an Epic that you got to go after though. The Scarab, the Scarab, the Scarab has defense and HP. The wearer gains a shield when it gets low every 45 seconds. If I refine that, it goes up to, yeah, 45% defense. But here we're getting, what, 25% defense plus flat defense of almost 200. And then we're getting an additional HP of, how much was the HP? 25% HP. What was the HP on this one? Oh, here, I've got it right here. 35% uh, HP. So on this one, the Banner of the Oath, maxed out, which I have it maxed out over there, is 25% extra defense, 195 defense, flat. So 200 defense there, and then 35% HP. So I'm sure if you maxed out... Oh, we beat it? We beat it in time? Let's go, man. 17 seconds left. Woo! Boy, look at that. Free to play. No legendary gear at all. No legendary gear. But of course... 
Oh, we got enough to craft one. We don't have double drop rate. That's tomorrow, man. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow's double drop rate. So if you take a looky look, I did skill out this guy. This guy is so worth skilling out. Look at his skills down to 14 seconds of 48, uh, 14.48 seconds. Now that's still not fast enough to keep up with the harpy. If you can believe that the harpy is still like, I was hoping that him with skill books and the goblin set that he would be kind of with the harpy and be able to cast that every ultimate still not fast. I mean, that harpy is so fast. But he, he keeps up with the healing. He definitely keeps up with the healing. We've got her in here. We've got him with defense, HP, defense, HP. I got to get this to 20. As soon as I get resources, I'll knock that up to 20. We've got her in here with the goblin set and all attack. Increase her healing on that battle skill. We can't increase her healing here. It says 20% of the target. I could put books into her, but I don't feel like it's worth it. I'd rather put books into him. I mean, it's worth it, right? You can get her heal up to, this is multiplicative, not additive. So it doesn't go from 20% up to, you know, 55% or whatever this would be. It goes up to 26%. Is that 30? Yeah, it goes up to 20. I mean, that's a pretty big jump, right? 26%. So if you wanted to do that, you could do it. It's, it's still an increase. Then of course she's booked. So we have a hundred percent chance to attack down and heal block for all content. She's not booked for this specifically but she is booked because it's worth it it's worth it's worth it i use sigrid everywhere you know and he's not booked like if i wanted to make him stronger we could keep in mind we're doing the end game content like this is it this is nine this is the end game end game this is where we're getting all the great gear to then do all these bosses and three wave battles and pillars and fey meanders 180 floors of fey meander all that kind of stuff this is where we get the goods so we could increase this i mean i like the shield proc rate increase in the shield would go up to 12% of his max HP. It's pretty interesting, but I don't feel like I need to. Like if we're if we're making it without it, you know, why am I gonna waste that? If we're making it, we're making it. And then her, she's booked as well, so I can make sure we always remove a buff whenever we fight Grave of Curse or any boss, uh, Ancient Battlefield, same thing. I wonder if she's close enough to give this shield to Horus every time she doesn't move. Like who's she giving that shield to? Because he's close enough to take it. They're just as far spread out. I wonder if she's given that little uh, 10%. Whenever this hero does a skill, 10% max HP shield to the nearest ally for 10 seconds. That'd be really cool if she's handing that over to Horus. But I feel like everybody's two squares away. One, two, three. Oh, he's like... I don't know how they count squares. I don't know if they go one, two, three like that. But Horus would be just as close. That'd be really sweet if she's giving it to him. Uh, do I have the lowest HP? The lowest HP is right here. It can be Hexander as well. You always want the lowest HP to be within a three square of Horus. That way, whenever you're getting these heals from Quirion down there or anybody, even if you're using Meredith, that three by three heal that they do, this one, you want to make sure that they're hitting the person, that they're healing your tank and healing the person that's being hit by the Wisp. So right now, it just worked out well that she has the lowest max HP. For her. But she's taking it. I mean, she's got attack, attack, attack. Okay, she's got a defense here. We could we could put attack here instead of defense and then make sure that like Hexandra has the lowest overall HP. So the Wisp is hitting her and then still within a three by three. So that when we do our ultimate healing that that those two are taken care of. Yeah, we could do that. And we could increase our attack a little bit with uh, Arena. But once we have legendary gear, their, their damage is gonna go up and it's gonna be even easier. Attack down mandatory in this game for a lot of content. Attack down is mandatory. We need it on Grave of Curse when, when the boss does the ultimate. We need it periodically here. It helps. It really, really helps. You don't have to have attack down here if you have a epic tank. If you have Furbath, if you have Garius coming in here and helping out with all the healing, you don't have to have decrease attack. And I don't have to have decrease attack once I have my healer back here. Like if I bring in, who's the other healer? Uh, Meredith? Where'd she go? If I'm using Meredith, this common healer, if I'm using three heals, then I don't need attack down for him to survive. It's really easy. And this could be any DPS you want. Although it needs to be a DPS that's either fire or poison. That way we get the three person bonus. So Horus will get the additional defense, HP, flat defense, flat HP, 9% HP here. And then your attack will get all this as well. But really the tank needs it. So you got to make sure that this then this 
is either poison or fire. Unless you can bring in another healer that's poison or fire. Or shielder. And then you can make this DPS whatever you want. Doesn't matter then. But your tank needs to have all those stats. So it really just depends on, you know, what tank you're using. If you have some cool epic stuff. There's a lot of ways you can play this. Especially if you have cool epic characters that make it much easier. Who do you have at the lowest? Oh yeah, I already answered that. Yep, yep, yep. So we can make it. We can make it tomorrow. It's time to farm some, farm some level 9. Once I start farming level 9, say we get a few that, that make it, a few that fail. We get that stamina back. Once I have some legendary gear to put on my DPS people, it's game over. Level 9 of Venom gives 45% instead of 25 from the banner. Yeah, yeah. Those are nice, but they're they're epic and they take more to max out. Now, in the long run, I do, I do agree with you. The epic ones are going to be better, but this is a rare one. This is a rare one that everybody's going to have access to. I use Erich, but have you but you have to manually aim his ultimate and not the wisp as well. That's right, because he'll always hit the wisp. When I use Erich in here and I put him in that position to DPS up at the top, instead of attacking the boss the whole entire time when he does his ultimate, I swear at least 4 out of 5 of those random meteor strikes that he does on his ultimate and that's like the majority of his damage. That's where all his damage is coming from. It hits the wisp, the top wisp. Yeah, I don't get him. I don't get that guy. I don't get the AI. It's really not him. It's not Eric. It's the AI in Grave of Venom. <laughs> That's the issue, right? On oh, Sigrid, so she can get 45% attack. Nice. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of requirements. A lot of essence, right, for us to collect. I feel like I've gotten a fair you know, I play my I play my main account, the one you can see right now. I play this fully, right? I'm always I'm always using my stamina. I'm always doing arena really easy arena wins i'm staying on top of it i've done every single side quest except for the few that you have to go out and just like talk to people around town to kind of find them but i still don't feel like i have enough essence to be leveling up tons of artifacts i mean i don't think anybody has that much maybe the next battle pass will help out with that it will i mean you can see we've got some essence in here Essence of creation. Whenever we do the... Oh, yeah. Didn't we get some rewards today from alliance battles? Whenever we do alliance battle, All that kind of stuff, right? It's slowly... We get rewards everywhere. But I could swear that we finished an alliance battle, right? Another one? Attack and... D oh, man. We're moving up. Look at this. But I don't think there's any essence here, is there? Ah, oh, yeah, 1,000. Let's go. I think I can max out my artifact now. All right. We got two purple dice. We got a rare. Man, I will take these all day long. Give me rare scrolls all day long. There's so many good rares. I would love to max out. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Good job, team. And then we have 21 hours. I feel like this is kind of too, too often. I guess it's easy enough to do. We just go in and do a few. I mean, really, all I did was go in there and do two. I did two attacks on offense each day. I did two attacks when we broke down the gate on the NPC because all the other guys were dead. I went down there and did two attacks last night on, um, like, the side guys next to the ear. I didn't even have to attack the NPC that time. And that's all. So that was pretty easy for all those rewards you just saw. And then here, we've got this starting up in 21 hours again. And this one is extremely easy. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep running these because this one, this one we do nothing on. This one we just do our normal grind. And we got so many good rewards. It's not even these rewards that are great. It's the rewards for... Can we preview what the... Maybe not till tomorrow. It's, it's the rewards daily are the... Like the inside of these things rewards. I don't know how to explain it. Like the leaderboard inside... For your cumulative alliance doing, just going to do dungeons, going to do arena. So many great rewards. I think I think rewards are picking up, guys. They're picking up. Yeah, you like the Golden Wing Alliance better too? Yeah, yeah. That's good rewards. That's what I'm talking about. Can I now level up my artifact? Because if you look at all the artifacts I've leveled up, I got a lot of 12s. And 13s because I'll go to equip and instead of equip, I'll hit refine. There's the heart. I mean, I got a lot of 12s, but it's on par with the artifacts I have, I guess. I guess it's pretty good. No, no, no. What am I doing? Equip? No, no. I don't want to equip. I want to refine this bad boy. Can I? Oh, yeah. There we go. Maxed out. 35 HP, 200 defense, and 25. Okay. We're good now. Horus is straight.
Yeah, that starts tomorrow. We got to get rid of the stamina I've got going on right now. Let's go over to where we always go to use our stamina right now. The spot. This is where I've been living for five days, waiting for this, this increased drop rate. Oh, man. What's the question? Do you plan on co covering season two? If so, different play style, like more summons, legendaries, etc. Thanks. Uh, yo, yo. Do I plan on... Yes, I plan on covering season two, for sure, because I want to see what, what it's like. I want to see if players enjoy it. I want to see what the transition is like to go into season two. I want to brainstorm with everybody before season two starts and be like, okay, here are the heroes we have. Here are the new heroes because they're going to introduce new heroes into the game. So I'll be doing videos about all the new heroes and then whatever the new affinity is. What is going to be this new affinity and how does it affect us? Up here. So say, say poison, say they just rotate it all to the right. That would mean that we're looking at flame with radiant. Then we've got frost with poison and then lightning with necrosis. So then we got to think about all the heroes we have and how they're going, like how we're going to start. How we're going to start our new adventure. What are we going to use the most? Obviously, we're going to use our main character always because he can be the three major elements, the frost, the lightning, and the, and the, and the flame. Always goes really well. Are they going to have another three-day login reward? Like of the new heroes coming out, are they going to give us a new for season two? Because we don't know because season zero was just getting ready for season one. It was play test for season one. It wasn't like that's a whole different season. Season two is a legit whole different season. So will the three-day login reward then be a different kind of tank? Will it be Horus again? It'll have to be. It'll have to be Horus again. You know why? Because there are new people joining the game, which will then give us a free epic artifact. So I'm not mad about that at all. It has to be Horus because there's a lot of people that are going to be starting season two, season three, season four, season five, and they need a tank like Horus, right? So you can't take that out. But again, every season, that just means a new epic artifact for us. So that's fine. I'd say counterclockwise, uh, counterclockwise. Yeah, however they do it. I'm just saying that we're just going to have to come up with new ideas on on the rares and the choice free epics along with our main hero of kind of combinations of teams we want to use for Goblin. And then we don't know what the new bosses are going to be like. Are flame domains going to be the same? Is it going to be the same? I don't know. I would think Flame Domain, Frost Domain, and uh, Tempest Domain would be the same. Changing those every season would be too much of a hassle. But I don't think Harpy's going to be there anymore. I don't think um, Grave of Rot. I think all those heroes are going to be different. Now, is that true? <laughs> is that an actual true statement? I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if that's an actual true statement or not. That's a lot of work to go change those bosses every season, but you kind of need to. I mean, if you're if if that's your whole stick is to do a seasonal game, is just changing the story and the landscape enough and keeping all the bosses the same? I don't know. And, and the thing is, you can't make them harder just because some of us have more heroes now, and we have a wider selection because there's new people playing the new seasons all the time. There's new people coming and joining us all the time, so we can't. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be. It's going to be interesting to see what they pull off. That's what I'm excited about, right? To see what they pull off. See how uh, see how well they do these seasons. Because it's the first time for all of us to see something like this. So it'll be very interesting. I'm hoping for some new, bo new bosses, right? Because I'm already done. <laughs> like by the end of the season, I'll be done playing the Harpy plenty, right? I'll be, I'll be wanting a, some kind of new boss there instead of harpy i don't mind the domains being the same because i think it's kind of hard to change out the domains and i don't want to mess with something so fundamental the domains we need to kind of keep the way they are we don't need to make them crazy because that's the way we rank up our heroes but something like the harpy and grave of curse and all all of those they could definitely switch up well they did for sure they're probably out they're probably out to like season four or five on test builds or, yeah, 100%. They've already got seasons ready to go. I mean, that's that's any that's any uh, mobile gaming company, right? They've got multiple builds, six months to a year out, with all these different ideas, all these different bosses, all this stuff that they're always constantly working on, for sure. But we don't know what it is yet. You know, they're not going to tell us until closer in. Lathander, good. Isn't Lathander the one that whenever somebody dies, he gets a portion of their current ultimate gauge? 
Am I thinking the right name? Because if yes, then he's he's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I haven't had a chance to play him yet. Actually, did I pull him on the test server? Because I was missing him. It's one of the very few on the test server that I was missing that I did want to test out. Let me double check. We did a whole bunch of summons the other day. Still missing him. I'm still missing him. Oh, man. There are so few that I'm missing. Maybe I'm only missing about three epics, and he's one of them. Not even three. I could be missing only two epics. I mean, hell, man. Maybe I'm only missing one. Yeah, yeah. In, in fire, I've got all the epics. Let me see if you guys can see what I see right here. It's kind of sad. Yeah, there you go. You can see the... This is the test server. I've got all the epics in fire. The one that I'm missing down there is the one we get for free from the trials. I've got... I'm missing him right there. Oh, I'm missing Rowena, too. So I'm missing two frost heroes. Lathander and Rowena. I got all the necrosis. I have all the radiant except for gum. We get gum for free from the fame meander. I've got all the lightning and I have all the poison. So I'm missing two in frost. I'll have to look at the banner summons and see if there's any that are coming up that have him in there. Cause I, I want to pick him up. You know, I definitely want to pick him up before I lose access to the test server. Cause this test server isn't forever. If you guys don't know, I work this test server like a madman, but eventually they're going to close this thing down. Like they always do. I've been in multiple test servers with this company and I've had to start a level one account every time with the test server and play it like a normal account. And it's really annoying. So I'm thanking my lucky stars right now because the test server is still open, still working. I'm able to use it. That's good. Just hope it keeps up because if they pulled the plug from me right now, that's a lot of work gone. And I've got a lot of heroes still to test is the problem. A lot of heroes still to test out a lot of teams to build because I've been farming over here a lot of experience so we can make 100s. And I've got a lot of teams I want to try out as far as free to play teams all the way up to to legendary teams. Dauntless, wild, all the different combinations. Poisons. All of it, you know, all that good stuff. I have no idea what I had people equipped with. I don't think I had him equipped with this because he doesn't need accuracy. But I got to burn some of my stamina really quick. attack there we go man i don't think these guys are geared properly at all i think everybody's missing yeah everybody's missing something it's okay if i get a one star maybe a two star from time to time i'll be happy good enough Stu, your real daytime gig a video game consultant yeah yeah that'd be nice man I would, the breadth of data you produce, I would love to have a video consultant job. That would be a video game consultant job. That'd be so much fun. Like to go in there, like for King Arthur, this game and for King Arthur, Legends Rise, I would love to go in there and be like, okay, look, here's how it is in 50 other games that I've played. Here's how we can make it a little bit different. And here's how we can keep it the same so that people are, you know, have a good feel for it all. And it makes it exciting. There, there are a lot of things that these games do that, that are nice and interesting. And there's some stuff that's just like, uh, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? They, they make no more money if you mess up a build to swap gear. No, 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 no game. No, no currency. Steel City. It doesn't cost anything to move around gear in this game. Nope. That's a good thing. Look, this game isn't trying to nickel dime, nickel and dime you. Seriously. This game hardly even wants you to spend money. That's the weirdest thing about this one. Steel City. There's no pop-ups. There's no deals. There's no weekend deals. There's no... And I want deals. Like, that's not a good thing for me. I want to see deals. I want to see deals that are better than the, the standard deals they have in the shop. 
I want to see cool weekend deals. I want to see cool summit events. I want things that get people excited to spend money so that the company can make money and we can have a game that lasts for a really long time. I'm always scared when I see a game that doesn't like when they're not trying to make money. I'm just wondering. I'm like, okay, how long is this going to last? Not that it's not a good game. It's an awesome game, but how long can it last with them advertising all the time? Because you, as a game, you always got to pull in new players, right? Always, always have to pull in new players. So you always got to advertise. You always have to have some kind of draw to bring somebody in. How big roughly the dev team or the company is? This company is huge. Like the overall company is the people who make Marvel Snap. You know Marvel Snap? Oh, I got a two star. Nice. Yeah, the, the big the big parent company of this the, this uh, game is Marvel. The people who came out with Marvel Snap pretty recently, and Marvel Snap is a huge success, massive success. So this company's doing well. I mean, with how cool and good Marvel Snap is, and with how nice and amazing this game is. They've got a good track record. I don't know if they've done any other games. I didn't really research it, but yeah, they're doing okay. More deal variety would be nice. Yeah, a whole bunch of deal variety would be nice. And why not stamina packs? Like, why not a $5 stamina pack every every couple days? Why not a cool $10 stamina pack on the weekend that just gives you a, a crap ton of stamina? You know how many people would buy that? I would buy it. So many people would buy that. Just stamina alone would make so much money. And then, of course, you know, summons, like for the gold dice, you do some cool deals for gold dice over the weekends. It lasts like 24 hours. You know how it is. All those games. Feed the, feed the bread starved masses. That's right. We need to feed the bread starved. We're all so hungry. More bread, please, sir. More bread. We all need some more bread to play the damn game, right? That's what we want. It's it's crazy. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird uh, psychology, I guess. Make something that people really like. They love to play it, but then don't let them play it. It's a weird thing to do, right? Especially when your investors, if they're worried about that, your investors want to see time in game, right? They want to see the time, the amount of time that your players stay logged into a game in like a 24 hour period. If, if, if you have a game that people are only logging into 10 minutes a day, which isn't this game, believe me, you're not, you're not logging in this game 10 minutes a day, but if you have a game where they're only logging into like 30 minutes a day or an hour a day, then uh, you might want to find ways to make it, you know, capture their attention and keep them playing more so that they so they don't go play some other game. Right. And then eventually forget about this game and then, you know, a game and then go on to that other game. Marvel Snap is monetization feature either. Could be a company philosophy. Yeah, it could be right. If Marvel Snap doesn't have any kind of though, they do have a big shop, right? Marvel Snap has the battle pass. Then they have a shop full of a whole bunch of cosmetics you can't spend money on from what I remember. I only played it for like a week. Raid was dumb. How to attack people. Uh, Raid is very smart with how to do, do events. I don't like all their pop-up deals. There's no reason why you have to have things pop up in your face. You could have a little banner. Like this game has a banner up at the top. And the banner could say, you know, new deals. And then right when you log in, it could flash so that you know that there are new deals there. They don't need to come like this. They don't need to keep popping up for when you log into the game and raid, you're like, close, close this window, close this window, close this window. That's not necessary at all. But the deals are sound. Like as a philosophy for a company to make money, having those deals is definitely a smart thing to do. And then having summon events with meta heroes, 10 times events that really don't matter, all that kind of stuff is very smart to create hype and to make money. Cause you got a lot of whales out there that want to spend, man. They're ready to go. And on here, you just had the banners. That's it. You just got that one weekly banner, which is nice for whales. It is. It's pretty, it's actually pretty good for whales, but they don't have any, like there's no packs for them to go like, oh, this is a cool new pack. Let me buy all these cool new packs for the whales. There's not that. There's just the gym deal and that's it. That's all you got. Is rust and I can't even play, play it very often. Yeah, man. If you don't got time, right? Steel city. If you don't have time, you don't got time. Should I level Quirion or who's that other one for my support? Is that the light radiant team? Who's that other healer? I don't recognize. Is that the lizard that removes shields? I have no idea how to even pronunciate that name. I, 
Cuckoo cat? I have no idea. Is that even English? I'm sure it's not an English name. Enough to float a dev team to run a lost game? Um, it depends. It depends. You know, some games, some games really just would rather not. They'd rather go on to another game than to try to just float something. It's not worth it because they know it's they know in the in the not even in the long run it doesn't take that much time to slowly windle down your population and before you know it you got nobody revenues report no no, no i don't rip rad are there any out there yo rip rad what's up my man are there any cool revenue reports that we can see for like this game if if there's access to that kind of information for this game that'd be cool to see like if there's a uh, quarterly reports it hasn't been that long yet but if there are like quarterly reports we could uh, pull up somehow that'd be awesome Wales would be destroying everyone what do you mean it, see that makes no sense to me good moss no sense at all you think it no packs are good because whales wouldn't destroy me even more there you don't understand how this game works good moss there's enlightenment in this game inspiration right have you not seen like have you ever watched Arsalan's video when you see the, the little circle on a hero and you see this little hash mark around it, that means they have 8% attack, defense, and and uh, HP five times. And then all their skills are increased dramatically. Whales are already blowing you away. doesn't matter what you're doing. You're not even going to come close to whales, even with the way the game is right now. So saying that you don't, so saying that you want to hold the game back from making more money just isn't, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> doesn't make sense at all. You want the game to make more money so that we can enjoy it as free to play, right? You want the game to be able to pull in new players so that we can enjoy it as free to play. If if you do things so that you think that there's not a gap between the two of you, that there's there's uh, there's right now without even having more deals, there is such a huge gap that you will never ever come close to somebody who spends money in this game. That's the way it is with all mobile games. It's always time versus money though, cuz over time we're going to get cool stuff. We're going to enjoy the game. You should never, ever worry about competing against whales in mobile games. It's just, it shouldn't even, yeah, inspiration. Shouldn't even be a thought. Like You shouldn't even look at a leaderboard and be like, oh man, I want to be there. Who cares? Leaderboards mean nothing. It's all about enjoying the, enjoying the game, you know? Uh, find lists with aggregate, like top 50 gotcha. Oh yeah, yeah, you can find those. Those are everywhere. Where you can see like the revenue for, uh, for the Play Store. Enlightenment is game breaking. Skill, haste, inspiration, and legendary artifacts means PvP is impossible at the top level, even with better gear. Uh, yeah, that's every game, though. I don't even know why it needs to be said. <laughs> every game is like that, though. This isn't this isn't this game. This is every single game. Yeah, always. Is it possible nowadays to play a game for fun? It's actually the easiest nowadays. Nowadays, as free to play, every game is designed to be able to be done as free to play which makes it extremely easy. That's why I love playing them free to play because it makes it a little bit more challenging, but every single one is designed to be played as free to play. Dislight when they came out, right? We got a turn-based gotcha game with gear farming. Everything free to play. You could do it all as free to play. They had fusions, the, the tower, you get another hero from the tower, uh, infinite magic raid, free to play. Raid Shadow Legends, free to play. Doesn't matter what it is. Uh, King Arthur Legend Rise coming out. Easy free to play. This game, easy free to play. All of them are made to be exceptionally easy as free to play. Uh, comes out with, uh, I have no idea. Hell, Hades likes to make a lot of money, so we'll see what happens. It's all about uh, game design and the boss encounters and, and things of that nature. So we'll 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 see. <laughs> Yet to be seen. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, this game is great enjoyment. I mean, all games are great enjoyment. They're all easy to play. It's free to play. There's never like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why in this day and age anybody would say anything other than all games are simple to play. It's free to play. They are fourteen to fifteen million per month last month. I'm not. Yeah, it's probably on one platform though. That's probably maybe just on Android or just on Apple alone. And then you got to take in, so you got to take in both of those, and then you got to take in the own their own money they're making through their app, right? Because that revenue isn't going through the the Play Store or any of the app stores, right? It's going straight through their their uh, PC client. That's what I'm thinking. Seems like it's going to be decent. Uh, yeah, I mean, hype is hype, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't 
not hype your game. You wouldn't not try to make money and hype your game. I choose elites over legendaries a lot. They give a lot of purple dice also. Yeah, yeah, they do give you a lot of purple dice seers. And you do, you play epics over legendaries a lot of times. Yeah, it depends. I mean, these legendaries are actually pretty strong. It just depends. Some of them, you need a team more than others. You need, you need to like build a team around them. Some of these legendaries, some of these legendaries are godly just by themselves. So it just kind of depends on what kind of legendary you pull. Some of them, you know, and, and a lot of legendaries, like in most games, they're kind of PvP focused, which is good because you want the whales to go after all those legendaries. You want them to have their fun in PvP. So it's smart. The good legendaries that you pull that are really good in PvE, those are the ones that I like. The ones that will help us with progression. The ones that will help us do better on bosses, help us do better making it through the story mode. These three wave battles help us go through the pillars and through the 180 floors of the Fey Meander. Those are the ones I like. I think they're global overall. What's Honkai Star Rail five times them? Uh, Nikkei tripled them. Nikkei tripled who? Nikkei? Really? Nice. Well, globally, Raid isn't like a, a highest performer. It is definitely a highest performer revenue-wise, but it's not It's not like the, the highest standard. Obviously, anything MiHoYo is going to blow Raid, Raid away, right? They're, they're pretty much like the highest, right? Nikkei, though, surprises me. Globally, you know, Nikkei probably rakes in a lot of money. Probably a lot of the Asian markets. I don't know a lot of people that are still playing Nikkei in the West. I'm sure there are some. It's so fun. You just like to see booty shakes. Come on. You just like to see them shoot their guns and their booty shake and stuff. I know. I know why you're playing it. Last month because of Automata crossover. Yeah, I haven't been following it. I haven't been following anything with Nikkei. I remember when it came out and I looked at it, but I didn't actually play it. Vulcan was hyping it up to me and he was playing it, but then, you know, he's not playing it now. So he, he likes to, he likes to jump in on those kind of games and cover them for a month or so. Do you still play Nikkei too? <laughs> Do you? Is it easy to jump in and jump out? Guns make jiggle physics. They do. They do. They've got some, they've got some nice stuff in there. I just never played it. Like I never, I never had the experience of being on the trains and shooting out the bad guys or doing a boss battle and shooting the bad guys behind some cover. So I don't know what it's like. And it didn't, you know, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for the fantasy look. If I can, I'm all for the dark fantasy, high fantasy look. And then like a really cool cyberpunk look. Yeah, well, that'll keep you that'll keep you hanging around, right? A game that's really, you know, any of those idle games that are really easy to jump in and, and collect all your rewards, push the complete button, and then you're out in 10 minutes. That's the reason why I was loving and playing that newest idle game that just came out. I did a video on it, a couple of them, and then luckily after I did a few videos, they sponsored me to do a video. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I've been playing it for 10 days straight. I'll do a video on it. What was the name of that one? And that one had some really nice artwork too. I mean, a really nice artwork. And it was so easy for me to get in there and do all my things every day in about 20 minutes total, you know, cause there was a, there were a lot of, a lot of areas to go into a lot of different dungeons. So about 20 minutes total, I could jump in there and do everything I needed to do for the whole entire game, but everything I could quick clear, I could skip it. Everything in arena. I didn't even have to watch the battle at all. It was like arena done, done, done fast battle through this done, done, done. So I could set up my teams. And then if I wanted to concentrate and work on it, I could. I could sit there and move around formation, see what my gear was like, and I could work on it. But they made it very friendly to just get in there and get out. And I think that's what most idle, idle games should do, right? It was called Omni Heroes. Yeah, and it actually had a cool look, really cool look to it. It was called Omni Heroes. Or it is called, not was called, Omni Heroes. And you get 777 summons in the first week. So there was a whole bunch of legendaries that I was picking up and, and doing, you know, a lot of the idle games do that. It's pretty much par for the course now, you know, if you're making an idle game and you're not, I'm still playing it. Yeah. yeah. Damn, man. How many games are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> Every game we mentioned, he's like, I'm still playing that. Are you still playing Summoner's War? How many, how many games are you still playing from back in the day? Sometimes you just, you got to let go. You got to cut the cord. That's a, uh, He's got 16 monitors. He's played like all of them. 
It's like that guy on the bike that was playing a uh, Pokemon. The guy, the dude, old dude on the Pokemon bike. That's real. He's got, he had like 30 phones and he's going around playing Pokemon Go. You quit Summoner's War? Summoner's War is, you know, I think every single Summoner's War fan is waiting for the re-released version of Summoner's War. And I don't know what's going on with Com 2 Us. Like Com 2 Us keeps coming out with games that are, that are good, that are decent. But all we want is just Summoner's War redone, remastered. I don't even care. It'd it, it just be like coming out with World of Warcraft, right? World of, War, War, World of Warcraft, like they've done. They came out with Vanilla. Then they came out with uh, Burning Crusade. And they kept going on up, right? All you got to do is make Summoner's War look like this, right? Remaster it till it looks like this. Start from day one and call it Summoner's War Remastered, whatever you want to call it. And then eventually come out with content that you've already come out with. And I'm telling you, I would be playing it. I would jump on that in a heartbeat and cover that every single day with content. Because it's such a good game. As far as turn-based gotcha games go, Summoner's War basically laid the groundwork for everything you see. Everything you see. Boss battles. Anything you see in Raid is straight copied. Straight copied from Summoner's War. The Golem battle that you fight in Raid, straight copied. Every single mechanic. The... Uh, the uh, the Fire Knight that you fight in Raid, copied from Summoner's War because that's Necrosis and Summoner's War dungeon there. Anything you see in Raid was copied directly from Summoner's War. And anything in Epic 7, like the Guild vs. Guild and all that other kind of stuff that you see in Epic 7, copied straight from Summoner's War. They always innovate amazing things for turn-based gotcha games. But I don't know why they don't... You know, I guess Comp to us is still making so much money with the original Summoner's War that they're, they don't want to... They don't want to transition into a newer one. I don't know. I think it's time. It's been time. You know, why not? You're still going to keep all your guys that want to stay back with all their other heroes and stuff. Make a new one, man. Make a new one. And they've done it many times to where they've made something close to it, but not quite it. Like they tried to change things up. Yeah, what's happening? What's happening? What's going on? The game is dead or just boring? What's what's that? Awaken Chaos Era? I haven't played that in a long time. A really long time and yeah it just kind of it didn't have the mechanics i don't know something about that game just didn't have the mechanics i liked uh moderania uh, positively blessed what game i was sad with the lord of the rings heroes flop so bad did you did you enjoy that game it, it was all about the graphics for me on that one. I actually covered that on my second channel, I think, for a little while. Or maybe even my main channel. I think I did about 20 videos or so in that game because I was playing it. I was actually playing the early access of the Lord of the Rings, uh, Heroes of Middle Earth. But the graphics were so terribly bad, I, I just couldn't stick with it. And there wasn't really much going on at, at global release. They were really slow playing that launch. And it was done by the same, it's done by EA, who does Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And you take the look and the sound of Star Wars Galaxy Heroes... You copy that game model, like straight copy it, right? And you bring it out as Lord of the Rings, but you have it look like total trash. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't get I couldn't get behind it. I was like, come on, guys. This is this is EA that makes the same company. I could even be the same people. I doubt it. I doubt it's the same de department. But they may they make Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And you're gonna come out with an exact copy of that game, the same model. And wrap it up in Lord of the Rings, but have it look that bad. I just couldn't do it. Is it really hard to level up in the beginning of Dragonair? No. It's uh, it's an adventure. It's not like you just get your hero and level up. It's different. It's different than a different than a normal game that you're used to. That's why it's 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 a crossover. I would say it's a good crossover between a mobile game and and I'm not gonna say MMO. Because there's no there's no multiplayer in there. There's nobody else running around the world with you. But like a single player campaign game. I play on the PC all the time. Even if you play on your mobile device or a tablet, it's gonna be the same thing. But for me, it's nice to see it bigger. But it feels it feels like something more than a mobile game. And I'm not trying to hype it up, but that's what it feels like. You can you know, I've said this before. You can ask people. You can ask people about it. It feels like something a little bit more than a mobile game. You've got those mobile game aspects to it, but then you've got this like bigger world. So it gives you more more uh, immersion, I guess. I like it. 
I like it because I don't feel like I'm going to that one, 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 two. I feel like there's more things to do. I feel like there's different towns to jump over to. There's cooking in the game too. So I'm collecting things to do cooking. They give it that little bit extra to separate itself from a normal mobile game that you would play with gear farming in it. And it's worked. It's actually working out pretty nicely. Yo, mobile gamer in the house. You're stuck on campaign. I can only do goblins level two and it takes forever to get potions to level my guys. Yeah, I mean, that's everybody. That's everybody in the game. Imagine Lord of the Rings franchise selling their IP rights to EA and then they release <laughs> low effort crap, right? I know. It's pretty sad, right? Mobile Gamer. What's going on, man? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Mobile Gamer crew. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. Uh, I was going to ask this to you guys that play Marvel Strike Force. Okay. Now, I played Marvel Strike Force in the beginning, and I love Guardians of the Galaxy, but I especially love, from the, from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I love Yondu's story arc, right? I've got Yondu on a poster back there. This is the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in the back here. You probably can't see it very well. It's underneath my, my Stu's uh, bar sign. But Yondu is right there front and center along with the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy. When I started playing Marvel Strike Force, Yondu was not in the game. <laughs> I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. He's so good. I mean, to have a hero that you love, uh, anti-hero kind of, to ha that you love so much, and then to have them die, rest in peace, Yondu, is the greatest thing. Because he was so amazing, and then he died. It's like Tony Stark, right? You have this amazing character, and then they died. So even though you don't want him dead, you want to see them more. It's stronger. It's much stronger. He's very weak in the game. Oh, man, come on. They didn't do him justice. He should have a I'm a Mary Poppins, y'all move. <laughs> like an ultimate move. That'd be so good. He's trash now? What the hell? What did they do to him? I don't remember Yondu. When I first started playing, we had Rocket Raccoon. Like in the uh, soft launch, even the soft launch of the game, you had Rocket in the beginning. You had I had Star Lord, Rocket, Drax, Gamora, and Groot. There was no Mantis by then, right? There wasn't there wasn't Guardians two out by then, um, and there wasn't Yondu. There wasn't Yondu in the game. I don't I don't remember if there was Yondu. Was there Yondu in the game? You know, now that I'm thinking, did was there Yondu in the game when it first came out? He's very weak. That's not cool. Needs a rework. <laughs> Love Mary Poppins. <laughs> he need they need to rework him, man. Sad for the dupe, but relic? Relic help? Oh, you got a you got a new dupe? Witch's hand is super good along with the hourglass, depending on what you want. Yeah, yeah. Did somebody ask about legendary artifacts? I don't play mobile games. All I've tried was raid and it was awful for me, but this game really feels like a PC game. See what I mean? See, it's not just me. I'm not just trying to hype the game up, even though today is a sponsored stream. So if you do want to play the game, use this link down below and it'll take you to the main website. It is awesome when you get to get sponsored to play a game that you're already playing. It's pretty amazing. But yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't feel like a mobile game to you. It feels like a PC game. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say it feels like a a world of warcraft right like i said it doesn't feel like a an mmo because i'm not out here playing with people if there were player if there were players running around with me while i run around and then i can interact with them then yes i would say full on this game feels like an mmo but it does have a beautiful cross between mobile and like a campaign an in-depth game cooking we've got more things to do there's this little fishing port you can go to i don't know i just feel like it's it's more it has more depth than a mobile game. It definitely has more of that feeling. And they botched it. He had a cool team refresh based on a what if series and they botched that one. Oh man, my boy Yondu. Why? The relics are good. Erich dupe. Oh, you got an Erich dupe. You know, if you use all those Erich dupes, he'll get really strong. Now, I don't know if next season they're going to give us the chance to get another Erich or not. I'm hoping they do. I'm hoping every season you get a chance to get an Eric so you can make him super strong. Because if you put all those copies into him, he would be immensely strong. He gets like 10% crit, 20% critical damage, heals himself, ignores defense. And plus he gets 8% attack, defense, and um, HP every single time we do the inspiration for him. All legendaries, right? All legendaries are like that. That's why the whales have got us have got us killed when it comes to legendaries. It's not that it's, it's not that the whales can get legendaries. It's that the whales have multiple copies of legendaries, so their inspired legendaries are leagues above any legendary that we can get, which is a smart thing to do. Like, here's my take on that: If I build a mobile game, I'm going to build it exactly like that, 
That way, free-to-play low spenders have a high chance of getting a legendary, but it's nowhere near what the, the whales have. But at least they get to experience what the legendary can do. And that's what King Arthur Legends Rise has done an excellent job in doing, right? They've you, you haven't played the game. The game's not out yet. I've played the beta. I played the beta for that for, I don't know, six months. Long time. I've been waiting for it to come out. But that game allows everybody to get a lot of legendary heroes. And it's a perfect philosophy for your game because you're able to let guys play the game and be like, oh, wow, I got legendaries. I got legendaries. I've got all these legendaries. I have all these epics and rares to play the game with. But the whales have the inspired legendaries, right? So you're not going to be anywhere near the power of those. But you still feel good because you've got legendaries to play in the game. You can also inspire him, try him out. And if you, oh yeah, that's right. You can reset the inspiration and then use that inspiration, that, uh, that token to buy an artifact. But once you buy an artifact, you can't reset that. That feels a little bit like old Neverwinter Nights too, or Dragon Age or something. Yeah, like a, like a single campaign played game. Although Neverwinter's Nights, wasn't that multiplayer? Wasn't Neverwinter, we log in, and you're just in a city and then you can group group up with people and go do dungeons and pvp i thought something like that yeah except you need to stop because of the traveler level right oh i'm, I'm almost i'm down underneath now did anybody did anybody watch my video last night on how to farm nine venom nine any of you new guys from mobile gamer if you haven't watched my videos last night i got three new ones one is how to farm Venom 9 without any legendary gear on your tank. So if you're struggling there, get ready because in one day from now, Chimera, hey, appreciate the love, my man. One day from now, I'm going, uh, we're all going ham farming some gear. There were multiple never winners that, uh, that wasn't one of the people who did uh, Champions Online. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know which one I played. Maybe they think that offering more IRL money packs, it would ruin the balance. There is no balance. There is no balance. Uh, are the same like Baldur's Gates 1 and 2, but uh, 3D graphics. Okay, maybe it was like a never... Is there a never winner online? I know there's one online because I played it. I played like I just explained. I played the one online. I'm pretty sure it was never winner. Never winner nights. You go online. You're just in a city. And then from there, you just go into dungeons. It's kind of like World of Warcraft, but instead of having like a whole world that you run around, you're just in a city, and when you go into a dungeon, you just zone into a dungeon. The Neverwinter MMO. Yeah, and then PvP was the same way, which is smart because you don't, you know, if you have a fast-paced game or a cool game, you don't have to have a whole world for them to run around in. You could just have a city, go into dungeons together, get rewards, get gear, and then you come out, and then you're all in that city still, and go to your bank, go to the, uh, the, um, the market, the auction house, and repeat, you know? How much gold do you have saved up for the legendary gear? I don't have a lot, but every time we farm legendary gear, we get a good amount of gold and we get a lot of epic gear to sell. So there's where we're going to get it all. We're going to get it all from selling. Here, I'll show you. We're going to get it all from farming and then from selling and from selling the flat stats on all our legendary gear. So I think we're going to have plenty of gold. I was kind of worried about the gold. I'll admit I was, I was, but if you batch sell down here and you look at all the rares and epics that will net me 1 million, 200, almost 1.3 million. And then if I come down here and do this one, this is going to net me 2.2 .2 million, 1, 1.6 million. And then we've got 1.8 million. And then Every time we run it, I think it gave us, how much did it give us? It gave us a good amount of gold. Like every run gave us maybe, um, was it a, I'm not sure if it was a hundred K, but with that gear that we can sell on top of it, cause it gives us a lot of gear. Let me check this really quick to see what we had for that final run here. Oh man, I'm back to heroes wars. Hero war ads on, on YouTube. You know, it will be this way. So 180,000 on this one, I got. So from this video last night, you can see that I got, um, six runs, 180,000 gold, 
eight pieces of legendary gear. This is with the increased drop rate. And then look at all that purple. So we'll be able to sell all these purple pieces right away. And then we'll look at our legendary gear. If there's any of these like chess pieces with flat HP, flat attack, flat defense, I'm going to sell all of those. So I think, I think we'll make our money. I think we'll make our money. Just don't go level. You know, we're going to be farming a lot of legendary. So don't go just level any old legendary. Make sure that they've got good substats and definitely make sure that they're percentage based on the gloves and chess piece, right? And I think we'll have plenty, plenty of gold. I'm hoping. Which dungeon gives best gold return per stamina? Which, uh, uh, no, because I've got to farm. You got to farm Venom. I mean, that's where all the Venom has all the damage gear. Curse has the tank gear and like support gear. Rot has the really cool gear to really good support gear to give your team additional damage, to give you accuracy and resistance, and then to give you some stuns. If you have somebody that can do AOE stuns with rot gear, that's pretty cool. And then we're going to be farming. So the main places you're going to have to farm is going to be Venom all the time. And then you're going to want to hit up your runes. So you're going to hit up Ancient Battlefield and the heretical runes against the Phoenix. So those two little runes at the bottom, we want those legendary. And we can get those legendaries right away. So we're going to go fight Venom, get all that legendary gear. Then we're going to go fight. That's the, me. This is what I'm doing. So day one tomorrow, and I'll be here streaming. So tomorrow, right away, we're going to farm Venom as much as we can to get as much legendary gear as I can. Once I have good sets of legendary gear, I'm going to then take my guys over to Ancient Battlefield and Heretical Runes to kill the Harpy and to kill the big shield guy. Then I'm going to get those legendary runes on the bottom. And then uh, I'm pretty legendaried out. I'm going to be set. I'll be set then to, you know, go fight all the bosses we're fighting, the three wave battles that we're fighting, finish out the uh, campaign story mode, do better in Goblin, right? Anybody having issues in Goblin, you'll be doing much better in Goblin then. And that'll be it, man. I'll be farming those like crazy. And then when eventually I'm, I'm going to want to go into Rot to get that gear set in Rot. And then maybe I'll want to go into Curse one day for some gear set for my tanks. Or some kind of utility gear set. When somebody does an ultimate, they heal themselves by 20% of their max HP. That's in Curse. But honestly, I don't know, man. I don't know if I feel like going into Curse and wasting any stamina there. To 100 and made him a 15 million target on the Vortex? Hey, nice. Garrett's a killer. He's number two on my single target damage chart, but honestly, he's probably number one because once he takes damage, he does more damage. And I didn't have to bring anybody else in with Garrett to make him do more damage just by himself. He didn't need anybody, he didn't need anybody else with him. He's a killer. There's a new mobile game that I've been seeing tons of ads for like five years ago. But for the life of me, it's probably uh, that one, that one mobile game we always see ads for. Good purple gear for the uh, refinement. Yeah, if you find good purple gear that has amazing substats, then you could save it for that refinement. But I don't I don't know how many refinement pieces we have. In beta? Yeah, I did test it. It's all on my YouTube channel. I went over there. Well, I tested the boss battles to see how many we could do a day. And how many we could do a week, actually. We can only do three a week. We can only do three a week. And then I looked at how many amethysts we're going to get starting tomorrow but there should be and it tells you here there's going to be does it tell us here no it tells us on the test server hold on one minute let me run that let's make this one bigger Okay, so it's going on here on the test server. There's the Shadow Dungeon 1. But it says we're supposed to have six of these, not four. So we're not going to have one. It goes on for the whole entire month. And then each week we can fight three bosses. And you have to fight three different bosses and you have to use three different teams because once you fight one boss and save that damage, it's like the Vortex boss. We don't have to save it. Once you save that damage, though, you can't use those heroes again. So you need three full teams against three bosses each week to get a little bit of Amethyst. And then you're going to have six of these events during the month. 
which give you 15 amethyst each. So that's 90 amethyst total. That's pretty good. Free to play, 90 amethyst total. You're going to pick up 10 more really easily. So you're going to very, very easily get two gold dice. Right here. Two gold dice from the amethyst shop, no problem. Now, this guy is a whole different story, right? This dude's a whole, whole different story. Getting 200 is very different than getting that 100 you want for these two gold dice. And this event does not roll over. Like if you look at, uh, not here. If you look at, where was it at? Somewhere it tells you that, I thought it was here. Somewhere it tells you that these amethysts are for this event only and it doesn't carry over to anything else. So we can't carry it over. It's not going to carry over to next season or any of that. Uh, no, I meant the uh, other world. The other world, oh, the, the, the last event is going to be very similar to this in the form of having bosses to fight every day. That's what people are telling me from beta. Uh, here, I'll, I'll go into here, you mean? Okay, so in 25 days from now, right? So basically the first 30 days, we're, we're getting our heroes leveled up like we've been doing right now. And then at the 30 day mark, we get this increased drop rate in legendaries and they introduce this event that we have right now that makes us get used to building teams to fight bosses. And we need three teams anyways for the pillar. We need three different teams for our pillar here to go up each of these 60 floors. We need it in these different elements, right? So we can build teams for these and we can build teams for the bosses and we can build teams for those three wave battles. And then we can have a whole bunch of heroes then to do Fey Meander because we're already beating all these dungeon gear dungeons with rares to get all our sweet gear. And then we can do well here in the Fey Meander. But these bosses are gonna be, I think from what they told me in beta, cause I only played a month and a half in beta. They're going to be very similar. These the, the last month of the, the, the season, right? Two months in, the last month of the season, is going to have a whole bunch of bosses that are kind of similar to this. They'll appear every day, and then every day, from what Sebastian told me, we get to fight four. And you can't use those heroes again, and then they're weak to certain affinities. Same, same kind of thing, actually. And then there's a big, there's like a big, big boss. There's something like some big server-wide big boss. But when those bosses appear, they're done differently because there's a leaderboard for those bosses. I do remember that. I remember that. So right now for these bosses, there's not, there, there's a, there's an overall leaderboard for them. Yes, but it's not done the same way. It's like a, a huge server wide thing then. So every day when you fight those bosses, you see all this damage from everybody in your server and you're all trying to do something to take down these bosses the last 30 days. And then there's some big, big boss that pops up too. But I didn't play that in the test server. I only played a month and a half. I didn't play the final month. In beta? Yeah, yeah. Is that how it goes? Yo, Gory, what's up, buddy? Yeah, in beta, right? That's how they did it? That's what Sebastian kind of explained it to me, too. Do the double gym cells reset tomorrow? This is They're not going to show it to me here because I'm on the test server. This is the test server, so they don't have anything for us to purchase. But why would those reset? I would love for them to reset. I would, I would love bagel mage. What's happening, buddy? If I don't do the two commission quests today, they'll, they'll save up to six. I think six or eight commission quests. So don't stress. Honestly, if you missed a few days in this game, it's not bad. I think up to six, maybe eight, but for sure six. I know they'll keep saving them up. So if you miss a few days, do not stress about it. That just means that you didn't have as much stamina because your stamina capped out and you weren't able to spend it, but not a big deal. You can catch right back up with all those with all these commission quests and pretty much be at the same adventure rank that everybody else is at. And then you can jump right back up to where they're at. Did I miss any other questions? Let's see. No, no, I didn't sell any of those quest rewards yet. I forgot to look. Let me jump over. To, okay. Here's my main account. What, what ones can we sell? You said there's some quest rewards we can sell in here. Or they're down here, right? These? This says read. Oh, it's got a... Doesn't it have like a little icon next to it for selling? I don't see an icon. 
I don't see like a monetary selling kind of icon. Maybe we got to go to a shop. Hold on. Let me see. If we go to a vendor, maybe. You just missed one. Yeah, yeah. I think the one is a match, but won't it tell us if we go to a vendor? Let me, let me find this other vendor we could steal from over here. <laughs> let me go steal my yak milk really quick. This guy's always got a lot of yak. There he is. Don't run. Don't run. It's okay. It's okay. We said hi. We've been saying hi every single day. You know me by now. We're best friends. Thank you. Appreciate that. 12 jugs of yak milk. You're the best. Okay, let me see here. Sell. I can sell keys, but I don't want to sell my rare keys. These open up chests. You can do it in camp too. Oh, okay, okay. You need a vendor, or in camp, in camp at the uh, the cart. Can you go to the sell part? Oh, once a month is usually how gotchas do it. Yeah, not here, not here. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna reset those double gems. Not at all. I don't think they're going to reset that. This game isn't big on deals and, and special deals or, or any kind of deals. So this one cannot be sold. That one cannot be sold. None of these can be sold. Does it have a... a oh, there's a money. Okay, this is a, a book to cook food. And it's selling I can... That's weird. Why doesn't it just put a... Like a coin icon next to it. Eighty thousand for a secret chronicles of the dragons something palace. Valuable records of the meeting between courtiers. Anyone without close ties to the royal family would never <laughs> entitled to read them. Okay, we'll sell that. I don't think I need that one. Uh, it does for the sellable ones. Well, no, no, no. I don't see an icon for the sellable ones. That book was sellable. This book is sellable, and I don't see an icon on it. There's no icon here. This is teaching me a recipe, so I don't, I already know that one. Um, this one is another recipe book for flaming chili. What does this do though? Don't pretend to have forgotten how you obtained it. The medal of the sore loser. How did I get a medal of sore loser? What the hell is this shit? You pulled a rash today? Hey man, congrats. Is the phoenix egg the dice and the treasure? You didn't know the riddle? Oh, I don't read the riddles. Yeah. Well, I'll pretend like I don't know how I got these and I'll just sell them really quick. There we go. All gone. I forgot about that. I don't read the riddles. When I go up to those, I just, I don't, I just click one, two or three. There's three different little answers and I just pass or fail, whatever. Take what I get, man. Reading is hard. 800 these are only little 800s cannot be sold yeah this isn't worth my i mean we've got plenty of gold plenty of gold for selling the gear that we're going to get whenever we farm for legendary i don't know if i need to sell all this little stuff six thousand here or there this is this is pleb bunny little baby money i don't need four thousand two thousand two hundred come on Oh, 150,000? Quest item. Braided from the vines of the imbued with, from vines imbued with magical powers. Uh, do I need this? Valuable quest item. Used to complete various quests. Man, what if I need that? 150,000, I'll take it. Even though 150,000 isn't even a lot of money. It's not a lot of coin, man. We need the coin that we get from farming and all the gear that we're going to sell. 150k is nothing. Yeah, I guess I didn't have any cool stuff to sell. Will be the main source of it for what? Gold? Uh, how do I obtain echoes of Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's how it was in the in the last season. The last month of the season was where you could really get a good amount of ranking and resources to use in the next shop. At the end of the shop at the end of the season. This right here. these and I don't know if it breaks it down here does it I 
100 to 1 ratio, okay? During the first 144 hours in each season, you can reset your hero's level and have your invested resources refunded. Um, limited time rebuilding. I don't I don't feel like it's it's giving us a good at the beginning of the new season based on the total amount acquired in the previous season. Sandstone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it really give you a good idea of how you obtain this? It starts in like 48. Yeah, it's it's the last month of the season. So the first two months, the first 60 days, you can get this from doing the Vortex boss. How well you place on the Vortex boss. I've got 2,680. And I think there might be one other way you get a few of these. But the Vortex boss for now. Like for the first two months, the, the Vortex boss. And then the last part of the month, it's all those bosses we fight. But the last part's where everybody gets the majority. Because when I played a month and a half in beta and I didn't play that last month, when I started the new season, I got nothing. I got nothing at all. So don't stop playing that last month. Make sure you're playing that last month because I guess that's why it's smart, right? It's smart because it keeps you engaged in the game. Otherwise, I could just be like, you know what? I got a month. Everything's going to reset. I'm just going to chill and wait till next month to play the game. Like to pick it back up in the new season. I'll wait till then. So this keeps you engaged and wanting to play to the very end so you'll get new resources is what I think it is. Wait till the end of the those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're waiting you. Because by then you're gonna have teams. You're gonna have teams built up ready to fight all these bosses. And gear. You're gonna have all that gear for them too. Okay, I already stole his milk. Now I need some apples. Is it the best time to grind the hardest? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And by then you should have a whole bunch of legendary gear. You should have a whole bunch of heroes ready for all those different ready for teams, elemental teams. Like a whole radiant team or a whole poison team. That's what I would focus on. Because it looks like these bosses, these bosses take additional damage per element. Different boss will take 100% additional damage from poison. So we need a really good poison team that synergizes well together. Something with a healer in there, something with, yo, yo, pickle, come back, man. I was going to steal your apples. I didn't know he'd run away if I did some craziness. I was just talking to him. Oh, well. I'm gonna have to steal apples from this guy instead, but Pickle had like five apples I could steal every day. I'm sure he's I'm sure he's maybe he's back up to those barrel area area that he was earlier. Top rank, who'd be top rank? Do you just not try hard for vortex, Stu? Uh yeah, I do alright, but I'm not I'm not uh I don't have legendary gear yet. You know, so I don't I don't really uh mess around with changing up heroes and leveling up new heroes for vortex and things like that. It does, the, the the reset doesn't interest me, honestly. Like competing doesn't reset, doesn't interest me. I'll make my guy stronger when I can, especially now that I'm going to get legendary gear tomorrow. But but trying to minimize, maximize, and spend all my time doing that, it doesn't really do anything for me. I'm not trying to beat anybody. I'm playing, I'm playing my game my way. I don't know where Pickle went. I'm pretty sure he's up here. Yeah, doing doing uh doing out out doing more somebody on the damage of the vortex boss doesn't doesn't really doesn't really blow my mind. Once I have the legendary gear and I've got a vi a wider variety of heroes to use, then yeah, I'll do better on it. I'll, I'll absolutely put in a team that will do really good damage on it because I got the test server. I can test every anything I want, you know. Yeah, always do it your way. Don't be pressured into thinking you gotta. Look, I'll put it to you this way. At the end of the season, it's not like you think it is. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way. When you end your season and you're in bronze or silver or whatever you're at, I I mean, look, even if, say, say you end up in silver. Silver is top what? Currently, I'm in top 23%. Is that what I'm in right now? What is What do you have to be to be in silver? Like what, what top percentage do I need to be in to be in silver at the end of the season? Because most people are going to be in bronze, right? And you can get five gold dice if you have enough resources to get five gold dice, which I guess every 100 is converted into one. So I'm not even going to have an, anywhere close to... Maybe I'll be able to get five. By the end, if I'm fighting all those bosses, I'll be able to get five gold dice. Yeah. And here I could get 10 gold dice if I really tried hard, maybe. Eh. You got a good let, let go Dauntless and 70% damage. Nice. 
Top 50% is silver? Top 50%? Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a tab where you can go see that. Somebody showed me that recently. I forgot where that tab is. Uh, top 20% is silver. Bronze. Okay. Currently, I'm at the 50% mark, so I can be in silver. But I need a whole lot of more resources to be able to get all those gold dice. But ending the season in silver will also give you three gold dice plus oh, 288 crystals. And I don't know what these pages are. Common summon ticket. Limited summons at the new season. Each summon in this event consumes one dice. And one summon ticket. What? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Why do we need a summon ticket? One dice and one summon ticket. Of each rarity is the same as the regular summons. So why do I want to... Oh, if you sum if you fail to summon a legendary in nine summons, the tenth summon is a guaranteed legendary. That's pretty wild, right? So if you have 20, you get two guaranteed legendaries if you save enough gold dice. So are we gonna want to save gold dice at the end of the season? Hey, check that out. Check that out. So even if you're even if you're here at at any of these, bronze, you you still have 10 tickets to summon gold dice. I need to do a video on this. So even if you're in bronze, you're going to get a guaranteed legendary as long as you have enough gold dice. Now, I've got eight gold dice total. It tells me right now I would get two more if I'm in the top 75, but I would still need enough currency to buy five more from the shop if I could. I would not rely on that, though. I would make sure I end the season with, with like five extra gold dice, five, six, seven, and then buy maybe three from the shop. Maybe end the season with eight and buy two from the shop if you have enough resources because this is a guaranteed legendary at your... 10th summon and then here you're going to get two guaranteed legendaries if you have enough gold dice all right i gotta end the, i gotta end the season in silver maybe and i gotta end with at least 20 gold dice because i've got 20 tickets so that'd be two guaranteed legendaries at the end of the season uh higher ranks the tickets get you new heroes what's that higher ranks oh i'm not i'm not trying to get up here i'm too lazy for that oh because they're gold here uh, each summon of the events consumes one dice, one ticket. Of each rarity is the same. If you fail to get a summon hero, the tenth one. When you use supreme, when you use supreme summon tickets, the probability of obtaining a new hero of the season greatly increase. Okay, so you can just get a new hero before the season starts. Nah, I could get it when the season goes on. No, no, no big deal. I'm not trying to make top twenty, man. Sorry, not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen for you either. Top 20 ain't going to happen for you either unless you're uh, unless you're wailing out. But you could try. Like, uh, hey, try, man. If that's what you enjoy doing, enjoy doing it. Me, um, I'm more of the chill, chill. I'll take I'll take 50% if I can. And even if I fall down to 70%, I get one legendary. No big deal. I'm still enjoying the game. No big deal. I'm playing it my way, and I'm relaxing and enjoying it. So that's all I want to do. 87 banner is apparently also happens at the start of every season. Yeah, yeah, it could start to happen. At, so save up, save up everything one season to go into the next season. I don't know if I can do that. I mean, I could now for season two because my roster is pretty big. But you're telling me to go three months without spending any, any gold dice. That's a hard ask, you know. You see all those gold dice every day and you're going to make me wait three whole months to go into a new season? Oh, the starlight challenge will stop you from from spinning your gold dice save them all up yeah you, you get five dice from the silver shop but i'm saying i don't know i would make sure you have enough currency like convert over your currency because it's for every 100 of those swirly essence things it gives you one currency and you need 100 of that currency to get one gold dice i would just make sure i end the season with enough gold dice to make sure you can summon your 10 or summon your 20. okay we got to do a video then i got to do a video on um Put in my notes on season in reward and why it's important to to uh stay on top of your game not to compete not to do well but just stay on top of your game just play your game and to play the final part of the season why it's important to participate in those bosses and get your teams ready now for those bosses because if those bosses are the same as the ones we're currently seeing then you need to make a team that's strong for at least three affinities i think four affinities wasn't it gory 
Gory, wasn't it four affinities at the end of the season? Four, there were multiple bosses, but you attack four every day or every week. Where's my other window? Pull this game up. So like these bosses, yeah, best is set up four teams. Yeah, best is set up four teams, right? So like these bosses, you'll have bosses that are that are weak to an element. So if we want to set up four teams, then whatever your strongest heroes are. So say I was lucky enough to pull Furbath. Obviously, that's a really good start to a poison team because you have Furbath, you have uh, Sigrid, Sigrid, and then you've got Hexandra already. So you've already got a core good team for poison. Maybe you pull some kind of legendary that goes with poisons. So you're, you're, you're even better off, right? Maybe you got Garius and Radiant and you want to make a whole Radiant team. That way you go to that boss that day that's weak to that element. Radiant damage is taken 100%. You got that team built and you'll do well. You'll do better, right? You'll do much better. And then you can't use that team again to fight those bosses. So now you've got another poison team along with that radiant team. And you just, you know, do your thing. Save gems and dice is my goal because I'm bad at saving. Yeah, I'm bad at saving too. I don't I don't know about this saving thing. What the? What is, what is this thing? I think I already mixed it up. This looks so scary. I got this. Just kidding. Not scary. It's like left Lex Luthor IQ right there. No problem. <laughs> no problem. My kid could do it. That's that Lex Luthor IQ. My kid could do that. No problem. Who's that? What's that? What's that one? Uh, saving? Yeah, saving is very hard to do. Saving gems and dice. But I've been saving it on my main account because I've been doing fairly well with the pools I have. And plus I'm using rares all the time. So I've been, I guess if you're using rares all the time to, to complete this kind of content, saving's not that difficult. Well, I was over here trying to do this before I got distracted by you guys asking all the questions. I was over here trying to grind this out so we could test some more heroes. Let me grind that. Let's put that over this way. I need to make that screen smaller. Okay. What are we going to do on my main? We got some PVP. Let me knock out some of these PVP battles. And has anybody been doing their 3v3 PVPs? I have not been. I have not been. Look, I'm waiting for legendary gear. Okay, that's why. Once I have that legendary gear, then I can outfit my three teams and be ready to go. But I haven't even looked at my three teams. Hell, man, I don't even look at these teams right here. Like, if this one beats me, I'm just like, whatever. And I, and I refresh and, and I go find somebody else. You can look at their gear. I could look at their comp. But I'm just, you know, hey, we'll beat them. I actually need to put in a different team because this, this team doesn't even do good damage. It doesn't hit the back line right here. This guy bounces between the tanks, but doesn't hit the back line at all. Too many legendary teams? Yeah, there are a lot. That's why it's best to put that one man defense and drop down. But there are too many legendary teams on 3v3v3, right? The, the team battles. So I need to make up some team battle teams. Man, I need some damage back here badly. Oh, we got her in the back. Oh, sniped. Didn't want to build three sets of epic saved. Yeah, that's what I didn't want to build. Once we had the legendary gear, we can save three teams of legendary gear saved. Right? So 15 sets of legendary gear, we can save all those. Then when I go into the team, I can make a team for it. The team arena. Yeah. Just need better synergy. Uh, full legendary teams are often terrible synergy. It depends on what they're playing. I doubt they do full legendary. They probably have like three legendaries and some sweet ass epics to go with them, you know? What do I have to play with? Hmm. Hmm. I don't even know what I've pulled recently. I do like I, I do like him. Gardris. Gardris is a lot of fun. Especially when they have somebody jump back and he just pushes everybody to the back. I don't have. I don't have Varesh on this account, and I don't have. Zarloth on this account, on my main account. We've got Iola. If I needed her in there, but I kind of just want somebody to smack, you know? For AoE damage, we could bring in her bag. Two legendaries, three epics, on, uh, or three legendaries, two epics. Yeah, somewhere around there. All three rounds. 
just all defensive. I mean, there's only so many Gariuses and so many uh, Urganders and all that kind of stuff they can stack in the front line on 3v3. We got to at least be able to pull off a one win or something, right? Let me make this screen. Oh, I guess I'll keep it to the side here. Got to be able to pull off one win. Who am I going to bring in here for, for damage, guys? Uh, her her cooldown's too long, or his. This guy, uh, I kind of I kind of feel like he's just not pulling in the damage. I wish I had a, like a Sutha to kill him and keep him dead on that ultimate. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, her big would be okay, but it's only if he's gonna AOE in the back line. Does he AOE in the front or the back line? I'm not sure about that. Let's find out. He doesn't need accuracy. Get his ultimate hitting attack. Okay, good. You're not hurting for characters? Me? Me? No, no. I got a lot of characters on this account. I've done a lot of summons on this account. Even though I only play it as free to play. Like, I don't even level up these legend. All these legendaries are level one. Now, in PvP, I use them. In PvP, like right now, yeah, I use these legendary heroes. But I don't play around with them on my normal, like, progression-wise. But I have started to... I, I'm needing to start to level these up so that I can play them in Guild Wars. Like, they would benefit me there in Guild Wars. Okay, so I need to take... Well, I need debuffs. I want debuffs up on the enemy, too. Who else can get me some... He'll give me some immediate debuffs, but I swear this dude just doesn't do damage. Not in PvP. PvE for getting up a whole bunch of poisons, maybe, but not PvP wise. Not a fan. We could do our guy here to, to help out. Uh, let's try that out. Who did he just make? Oh, Enlightenment Connection. Okay. Firing the Orbs Rally. Firing the Orbs Rally. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. We've got no debuffs for Sigrid, though. Well, we've got a attack down debuff from when they attack him. So they could get attacked down, I guess. Uh, I don't know about this little dude. Hmm. Let's get poisons up on everybody for fun. I'm so low down, it really doesn't matter, honestly. <laughs> I'm so low down in PvP, it, I say it doesn't matter, but a lot of these people have legendary gear already. Do I have any massive accuracy? Oh, he's going to give himself accuracy. We'll go, we'll go that. We'll get accuracy from right here. There we go. Oh, where did gear go? Percent attack. Oh, let's get rid of this. All right. Top two hundred. I still got zero legendary gear. Yeah, it depends on server. But if you're if you're uh, if you're active, you know, top two hundred is not bad. I was when I was active here in PvP. I was I was top 50, 70s easily. I'd get up into the fifties. And then a whole bunch of people started pulling out a whole bunch of legendary stall teams and stuff. And I'd always have a one-person defense. Love your streams, too. Hey, what's going on? Any idea what L1110 opens up for your server? Yo, Hot 6, what's happening? Uh, I don't know. What is L116? What is level? Is that level? What is level 110? I'm not familiar with that. Oh, all you see is Flame Domain? Oh, yeah, good call. <laughs> good call. That's all you've seen is playing no main the whole entire time? What's up with that? Hey, thanks for telling me. There's, there's the PvP. The whole time I was setting up my PvP and tunes and stuff, you guys didn't even see it. So I was looking I was looking through my, my guys, by the way, since you guys couldn't see what I see. Sorry about that. So I had this in PvP, right? And I was messing around with 
Herbeg. I was like, can Herbeg hit the back line or is he going to only hit the front line people with his AOE? You know, do I even want to bring him in here? So I put him in here with some gear really quick. And this is the first time I've really run him in here. And then I put some gear on Durango to see about the poisons so that the cigarette could hit them. And that's really all I was doing. It wasn't uh, anything fancy. Because he'll get poisons up right away so cigarette can pop off on him, right? He got poisons up on four before the match even starts so she can hit everybody. Because I don't have, I don't have Varesh. I don't have uh, Zarloth. You know, if I had Varesh, then he could pop them all. Then we could do that. But I wanted to see what would Herbeg over there in the left, what his AOE would be like. Let's see. What's he going to do? Uh, he kind of hit the back line, but I feel like he didn't have his ultimate, so he didn't do much. <laughs> Look at his damage. Look at his damage. He didn't do much. They need to be grouped up in AOE, you know? Her bag is being a pleb. Die in a minute or it's over. What's going on? Oh, tune level 110. What is tune level 110? I don't even know what that is. We can't make 110. Yeah, yeah. without rally, he's not going to double double slap. But still, still, one slap should be okay. Come on, man. He doesn't need, he doesn't necessarily need Rally to get that double hit. One hit should be sufficient, you know. Do I know the Welby strat? If he gets, if he gets um, Rally to be able to do his ultimate 50% faster. Yeah, without booking him, right, to be able to get Rally. No, no doubt, no doubt. Uh oh. Doesn't Torin have to be actually one square behind them? Like, this doesn't work, right? He has to be up on them. Mark the enhanced the first ally in front of the hero. Is it the first ally immediately in front of him? Will that work? I thought he had to be closer. It does say. It does say first ally in the front of him. Um. You use Welby and he one shots the back line. Really? Between them and it works. It works this far away. Okay. He's got another Horus in here, the Poison Horus AOE, which is actually pretty good. He's got Dane and then Varesh. He's got a lot of AOE here. Oh, Herbeg. No, uh, no rally for him. No rally for Herbeg. Come on, man. Do do something. Legendary. Do something. Her bag. Look at him. Look at him. Trash. Trash. Legendary. Jeez. Um, because he blew his skills were cheap. What are you talking about? You're talking about uh Welby? But Welby needs to get Rally himself as well. Now, if he's the only rally on him on an, on the team, he should give it to himself. But I think I tested it and he gave rally to somebody else. Let me double check that right now. Won't Welby give Rally to one of my other guys that aren't, aren't even a Rally hero? Or will he only give it to himself if he's the only one that's Rally on the team? Yeah, he needs a lot. And I, and I, don't, have, I don't have the gear right now. I just got one legendary that's going to revive my people. This is going to keep them from dying and revive them. So it's, I'm just cheating out with that one. Mithrasia in the bottom there. She's just making sure I stay alive and reviving anybody that does die. Let's, let's try Welby and see if he'll... Uh, is it better is better rally? Yeah, I don't have that legendary. Where's the little man with the staff? There he is. Uh, random guy found it cool to have 700% ultimate with such a huge arena, huge area. He gives it to a random guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he gives it to a random guy, then it's no good. He needs to give it to himself so that he can get the 50% turn meter increase, the ultimate gauge increase, so he can ultimate again really quick. If he's not giving it to himself, then it's no good. 50% chance to grant rally on a random ally. If it's just random ally, it's kind of bonkers. Yeah, we won't play him then. 
You gotta. That's why I don't. I don't. I'm not a big fan of the rally guys. Is the poison guy better than Twitch? No, no, no. Poison will do. Twitch will do way more damage in PV. PV. PVP for sure. PVE, I don't know. We'd have to outfit both of them. Twitch definitely benefits from enlightenment a lot. So we definitely need to outfit them with both. And then Durango needs crit rate too if you really want to optimize him. But I don't know if I don't know if we go high crit rate. If we don't go high crit rate, I actually think I have them on the test server we can test right now. Because when I when I did Twitch right here for AoE on three target dummies. With enlightenment, he does amazing damage. I took him out of that crit rate build. Like I test everybody with crit, crit rate, 100% crit rate. But for him, you need enlightenment so that the, his battle skill can shoot multiple times and his skills just do like 80% of attack, but a huge percent of, of enlightenment. So you need enlightenment on him for Twitch to actually do well. So what I did for his testing with the normal gear, he only did 500 and, uh, 568,000. But that normal gear is all about crit rate for everybody just to crit on here so they have standard numbers. For him though, I did take him in with 240, I think it was 270 enlightenment, no crit, and he gained these numbers, like crazy numbers. So pretty sweet. But Durango, I didn't test Durango yet, but single target damage with Twitch was something around, where was Twitch at? There he is. So still still down here with single target numbers, which which isn't bad. I mean, if you look at it, he's right underneath the Sutha. So he's doing amazing single target and amazing AOE. As long as we build him with some enlightenment and then we should get additional whatever else we need in there. Enlightenment and then, I don't know, attack. Crit rate attack. See what he can, see what we can do. But what is 700% ultimate? What is that? 700% ultimate with such a huge... Oh, you mean with like a diamond shape? 700 ultimate? I think a lot of heroes have that. You're talking about his multiplier, 700% of attack. Uh, she is the Mohawk Poison Bolter girl. She's the lady with the, with the Mohawk. You know what I'm talking about? In the poison? Let me see if I have... Let me see if we have Durango in the test server. No. No. Not Welby. Let me change this really quick too. Not Welby. Who am I going to put in here? This guy can strip all their buffs. Let me put him in here really quick. Caraman? Yeah, I should have Caraman dropping in there. All right, let's run this. Let me make this small. Okay. Challenge, go on that one. Let's bring up this screen. Because I think I, I'm pretty sure I pulled Durango recently. AoE stun is huge. AoE stun is nice. A we can get stun gear now, right? In Grave of Rot, the legendary gear, we've got that. Uh, if you have people to hit multiple times, like a stun set on Varesh, since he hits people three times, if it procs every time, like tries to stun people every time he does damage, it's going to be pretty sweet. Have you guys seen the stun set over there? Engraver Rot for the legendary gear. Let's see, we've got accuracy resistance. When the wearer deals damage to an enemy, there's a 20% chance to inflict stun for three seconds. Now, Varesh, it says deals damage. It doesn't say ultimate, it doesn't say battle skill. Varesh hits three times on his ultimate, so every single one of those hits should have a 20% chance to stun for three seconds. And it's giving him accuracy. Not a lot of damage, but we're still getting up block buffs. You know, we're not trying to go like full on damage with him anyways. So it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of cool <laughs> to stun. 
be really cool for somebody who has multiple hits on a on a uh, big ultimate and then also has kind of a at least a three by three on their battle skill that'd be nice too uh his battle skill ultimate hits as well yeah it's single target though right three hits single target to remove a buff So normally with somebody like Durango, well, normally with not, not, not with somebody like Durango with all my heroes that I'm testing on there, we put them in gear. That is like, there's Twitch. There's the girl that we were talking about earlier. Her, Bacana. And I tried her, I tried her with enlightenment and then I tried her with enlightenment chess piece and then i tried her with the crit rate gear and she did way better with the crit rate the normal gear that i test everybody with would be crazy with the reflect would it work off of reflect it, it does it says it will do so maybe somebody like elvis elvis who gets a shield when he procs that shield if he's your main tank and then everybody attacking him so it'd be really good in pve going up through fey meander going up into the the, the trials i think that set's going to be really good for the trials and for fey meander I mean, Fey Mander has 160 floors. I'm sure it gets really hard. I'm sure we need to sit there and stun them. Kind of reflects damage. Yeah, just like that, right? Yep, yep. Same thing, right? Rally legendary guy. Herbeg? Yeah, what about Herbeg? So anybody who hits... Oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking about Herbeg hits multiple times, so put uh, stun gear on him. Because he's blasting out all the, the multiple hits. There he is. We do have Durango. Let me see if I can level him up. See if I got the resources to do this. I know I've got the experience. I've been farming a lot of goblins. What we need to test today is what's up with poison. Like in general poison. We need to go to the vortex boss and I need to see the poison ticks and what really influences that. Is enlightenment really going to influence it that much? Because some of these heroes are really acting differently, depending on whether their hero really benefits from enlightenment like Twitch. Because Twitch, I mean, look at all his skills, right? Look, it's, it's huge. A thousand percent of enlightenment increases his damage, 90% of attack. So obviously we don't need a lot of attack on Twitch. It's all about enlightenment. And when I did put enlightenment, it made a huge difference, right? But it's still, we can still crit on this move. So it's not derivative damage. So having crit on this is still fine. Whenever an enemy inflicts poison, he can inflict poison again. So we have him with crit. We have him with a whole bunch of enlightenment. And he, and he, he pops off. The fix affects all derivative damage. And poisons. It's supposed to affect poisons as well. So I don't know. And then, of course, enlightenment affects guys who say enlightenment like this, right? This one says enlightenment. If, any of it, if, it, if it says it, it affects it, of course. It's the same thing with the heals. If the heals say it specifically. And then, yes, derivative damage. Enlightenment's supposed to enhance your derivative damage. But I'll tell you this right here. Look, look at this one. With her, look at this. The enemies within range that are marked for 10 seconds. Each time the marked enemy is inflicted with poison, a toxic blast is triggered, dealing 40% attack. Derivative damage. So you would think enlightenment would really infect this derivative damage. And she gets 20% additional enlightenment over time. Okay, let's take her with... Enlightenment, Enlightenment, and Enlightenment. See that? Let's take him out. Let's get some let's get some crit rate on him. We're not really looking at his damage right now. We're just gonna compare her damage with this gear, and then we're gonna put her in crit and attack gear. Enlightenment. We need to put in a full set of gear, honestly. I need to do some more farming over here. If we can get... Maybe attack percentage. Attack percentage, attack percentage. Crit rate accuracy, okay. And then what's the gear? Let me take these two pieces. Okay, this is crit rate. Yeah. So I want to go that. 
And now I want this enlightenment chess piece back. No matching sets? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so she's got attack gloves, enlightenment, enlightenment, enlightenment. No, we just we just need anybody anybody to apply poisons. We might actually have to bring in uh, Dench. If this guy isn't a, if Durango's not going to put up enough poisons when she does her ultimate, then we'll have to bring in somebody like Dench. He did it, he did it kind of early. It needs to be poisons that he applies when this is going on. There went a lot, I think. He's doing it way earlier than she's doing her ultimate. Let me do it this way. Let me do it for a shorter time and then I'll manual his ultimate. Let's do it for uh, there. I think his ultimate puts up a pretty good amount of poisons. I'll just wait for her to do her ultimate. I'll have him follow up behind that and we'll see how much he, how much damage she ends up with. And then we'll turn her over to attack and crit rate. And it seemed like attack and crit rate was making her damage skyrocket way more. But she's a beast. She's definitely a beast. But it's going to be varied, right? It's, it's varied anyways because Durango. Durango, I don't think, has a really high chance of putting up poisons unless he crits, I believe it was. I think it was. I think it's much safer to come in here and use Dench. Because he's pretty he's pretty on point with his application of poisons. Dench's. Uh, afterwards? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you say that? Derivative damage as well. What did it affect like the artifacts you get that? Yeah, the only artifact that affects derivative damage is the one that says only derivative damage, but then it takes away your whole entire ability to crit. So that artifact is only decent on very, very few heroes in the game. Charloth, is that his name? The one goat, all his skills are derivative damage. Like everything he does is derivative damage. So that would work with him. But even people who have some component of derivative damage, I still wouldn't put that artifact on them because it takes away your whole ability to crit. So she did 356,000. I bet. I bet that wasn't good. I bet this is going to be so varied. We need to bring in Dench. Because I don't know how many poisons old boy is putting up. So I'm going to put crit rate gloves instead of attack. Actually, it doesn't matter. I'm just putting the attack on with crit rate. We're going to get our 100% chance of crit like I normally would have. Oh, there's enlightenment on that. And then here, we're going to change enlightenment to attack. That's a 16 enlightenment. Do I have it a 16 attack? Yeah, there's 16 attack. Okay. So this needs to be attack. Why do we have so many enlightenment? It's like everywhere. I can't I can't get anything without enlightenment on it. This one has 12. Jesus. Okay, now she's all in attack and crit, right? Attack, crit, attack percentage, crit, and attack instead of enlightenment. So everything that was enlightenment before now is crit. Hey man, what's going on? Thanks so much, Slayer, for the sub slayer of the pizza. I like it, man. I wanted to order some pizza the other night. But uh, my family wasn't having it. Can you believe that I've got kids that don't even care about pizza? Oh my God, what is the world coming to? I've got kids that don't even care about pizza. You know you're in a foreign country with kids that eat like a Japanese style stuff. Like there's no kid in America who doesn't eat pizza. I mean, come on. You tell kids, hey, you want to order some pizza? Always. Yeah, 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 pizza. Get it. Any night, any night of the week, my parents could have said, hey, do you want to get pizza? And it's like, let's go. It's craziness, right? Absolute craziness. Uh, don't like Halloween. It's not like they don't like Halloween. They actually really like Halloween, but since nobody does anything for Halloween here, that they're not interested. Like this year, they're, my daughter's nine, my son 11, 
and they don't care about dressing up for Halloween because there's nowhere to go. There's legitimately nowhere to go. There's nothing to do, nobody to hang out with, nowhere to go. Their friends aren't, you know, their friends aren't talking about it, trying to dress up. So there's no excitement at all for Halloween. It's pretty sad, right? Hey, does anybody remember her numbers that we had a minute ago? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Is anybody was it was it three hundred thousand or something? I can't. I can't remember now. Why is he falling behind so much? I have no idea what that. It was three six nine. Yeah. See, her numbers. Her numbers are way better this way. And if we could get consistent poisons up by Durango, it would be different. Yeah, they're, they're just way higher. So it's weird though, because she has the enlightenment component. So you would think enlightenment would be something to really put on her and the derivative damage. So you would think enlightenment would enhance her derivative damage, right? Agree with uh, Questa for all the content we use her in. Uh, hey, would it be smart to replace? Well, they're, they're doing, they're doing totally different things. Yeah, one would think that with her, but I'm telling you, when I did testing with her, it just didn't seem to work out that way. So when I have her testing here solo by herself with the gear, this is with the, the crit rate gear, right? When I put the gear that I put on Twitch to make Twitch hit so well, because Twitch does so much with enlightenment, I put that same gear on her thinking, okay, maybe it's going to change her damage. Cause see how it changed Twitch damage. Like Twitch damage went from 327,000. Then I gave him all the enlightenment, but Twitch's skills have a lot to do with enlightenment. Not that hers don't though. That derivative damage is all about enlightenment. Whenever somebody poisons, when she does her ultimate, her passive is giving her 25% additional enlightenment. So I put the same gear that I put on Twitch to increase his damage from all that crit rate stuff that I test everybody on. And his jumped up, right? But I did that to her and hers went down, which was really weird. So I kept her with the same gear that I use everybody with. And then with Dinch in there, putting a whole bunch of poisons up every time she did her ultimate, her damage was just crazy. The Labyrinth of Curiosities. Which which one is that? That sounds so familiar. Labyrinth of Curiosities. Is that a quest? What's her percentage? You mean um, Bacana's percentage? To her skill percentages? 500% attack. So obviously that hit's going to hit, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no enlightenment portion of this one, right? But there's the derivative damage here of 40% attack. And when you pick, when you take like this, this damage is a lot. It's, it's a crazy amount because when you take her in solo, remember solo, she only did let me pull up my numbers here for me solo. She did 619,000. But with somebody else applying poisons, same crit gear, she went up to 1,176,000. No enlightenment, just the same crit gear. So solo, without anybody enhancing her ultimate ability, 619,000. So almost doubled. She's doubling her damage, and it's all because of this ability right here. This 40% additional attack from derivative damage. So you would honestly think, okay, if I give this girl enlightenment, she's doubling her damage when people put poisons up. Enlightenment's got to increase that a lot, but it didn't. It didn't. It dropped it down, which is weird because she's only doing one shot here, but the rest of it is all from this. Here she fires three bolts. Again, damage based off of attack, no enlightenment. She does some poisons, but who really cares about her poison stacks? It's not a big deal. And then here she gives herself enlightenment. So it was really strange on her to see that enlightenment didn't enhance her, that it was all about attack basically about about attack pr pretty much with the, the crit the crit helped out too for her moves right i don't know it's just strange maybe her derivative damage is critting and it shouldn't be no it's not it's all white numbers it's all white numbers i can show you though hold on so we'll put this gear back on this is the same gear i test everybody with right this gives us attack crit rate and then crit rate here so we have 100 percent chance to crit I wish I could test everybody without this attack, but it doesn't matter. If you look at a tank and the tank is 
Like if you look at all the tanky guys or people who deal damage based off of defense, they all just have a hundred percent chance to crit. So if you see one of those people that deal damage off of defense and they're the highest, then obviously if you put defense on them, right, as their main stat to deal damage, they'll be the highest hitting defense person. So if I put her in here by herself, let's check this out. With the crit rate gear. Have you checked the summon event for uh, the new one? Did a new one just start? I thought they had a couple days left of the older one. The one that we did for Tamar and Garaka. Is that her name? Garika? I'm saving my summons for this one. Oh, you're just talking about looking at the new events coming up? I haven't looked at that event. And I don't really have any uh, <laughs> coins. I don't have any currency to really worry about those events, you know? I don't have all that that money. I'm not a baller account. Let me see. Let me see what that event holds. Go over to events, upcoming events. Is it the 10? Oh, the 11 2 one. That one's far off. Uh, we got Asta. Felicity. We got the rat. Ergander. We got a Radiant, that guy with the big gun. Avelius is in here for Dauntless. That's pretty cool. What are you trying to get in there? What are you saving for? Uh, I'm saving the summons for this one legendary. It all seems good or great. Which one? Which which legendary? All all of them. You said all of them seem good or great. Um, I love Urgander. He's an amazing tank and does a really good amount of damage actually too. And if you give him enough accuracy, he's always applying decreased attack, especially if you put skill books into him to raise that from 30% when he's attacked to 50%. Uh, Asta is a great single target damage dealer and a great AOE damage dealer as long as there's frost up. If you don't want to get frost applied by him, you can always give accuracy to somebody else who's doing frost. Uh, Vinyara used to be really cool. I'm not really big on Vinyara anymore. The skeleton, skeletal face lady. There's the rat, which I've never really played the rat a lot. Just kind of a support, sweet looking Skaven. I don't even remember the skills this rat does. Defense up, invincibility, immune to all damage for how long? For eight seconds. Uh, over the duration of magic nexus, if an ally's HP, oh, only if your ally's HP drops below 30%, grants them invincibility. Yeah, I don't know about the rat. And then the rest of them, and then if you, if you need this for Dauntless, yeah, yeah. Avelius is sweet. So Asta, Avelius, Ergander. And then if you were if you had like a wild team and you wanted to get Felicity for your wild team, say you had Flora and you want to pick up Felicity, that'd be cool. Other than that, I don't know about the the rat, Vinyara, the um Filto for Rally. I'm not really a huge fan of Jorn. He's okay. And then you've got uh Ripekiss in here. Yeah. Maybe Jorn, he seems interesting. Yeah, I mean, they're all right. But which one are you going to pick? I mean, you get to pick one. You get to pick one that you want to go after. Best for most DPS? No, 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 no. That's not the case. It's not always crit rate primary gloves are best for DPS at all. I just have that on here that way because when you crit in this game, it's always the same damage over and over. So I just have them on here for testing. Because if it's a standard hero that just doesn't do anything special, their damage will be the same every single time. So that's why I use crit, crit rate gloves for testing here. Let's see what she's pulling. Oh, where's the numbers? So, so almost the same, right? Because there's a little variation. She's critting and there's little variation in the numbers. So she came out with 612,000. If you look at my previous runs with her, without anybody helping up, she's at 619,000. The only variation we're getting here, because she has 100% chance to crit, is the poison variation. And it's not it's not a lot with her, it's not a lot at all. If she didn't have that poison component, we would hit the same exact numbers every single time. So 612,000, 619,000. Now if we bring Dench in with this, it, it doubles her damage based off of, right? based off of this derivative damage from when people apply poisons, which is 
which you wouldn't think it's that much 40 percent of attack derivative damage and derivative damage we're supposed to be able to increase that with enlightenment but man you bring somebody like denshin and it just goes crazy you bring somebody in who can apply poisons like just whoever can apply poison it's not necessarily a dench dench isn't the man I'm just using him because it's easy for me to get a 100% chance to apply poisons with this artifact. He's got an 80% chance here to apply poison stacks. With this, it, it brings it up to 100% for him to even throw it out there. And we've got enough accuracy usually on a, on a level one test dummy. Although, I'm going to put an accuracy test piece on him. Yeah, give him that. All right. Now, check out our damage. I think his ultimate might go off at the same exact time, which is pretty good too. Yeah, it looks like they're tracking the same. She fires first and then he goes boom, boom, boom. And you see all those, do you see all those pops of damage? I don't know, man. I feel like her, I feel like her ultimate is critting when it shouldn't be critting. He's going to have white damage because he's not crit. He's got a really low chance to crit. So his all that white damage, but derivative damage can't crit either. So that 378 should be. But what are all those other flurry of numbers? She only hits one time on her ultimate for 500% of attack. And then after that, it could be her, it could be her battle skill. Okay, here she goes. Ultimate. Now, what is that? 70, what is that? 14, 14, 702. What is that? 7,000 ticking. Who's doing that 7,000 tick? A crit tick of 7,000 after she did her ultimate. It doesn't make any sense. Boom, 702. Well, why do we see? Why do we see all these? Look at why are those additional ones? That shouldn't this shouldn't crit. I think she's bugged. I think that's why she's doing so much damage. That you should build, yeah. Arena? Absolutely. Removing a buff from the enemy, decrease attacking the enemy. She's just a little fragile. Actually, she's really not. I just kind of always build her fragile. She uh she is a fantastic rare, but you might have somebody better. Who do you who do you have in lightning? And if you're looking for somebody that's a good DPS, go check out my uh, sheet right here. Go look at recipes. I don't know. I'm starting to think this girl's bugged. That's what I think. There's no way she can double her damage off of 40% of derivative damage. Not not off of a normal 40% of attack when it when it's hitting like this. Look, seven, 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 like 14, seven. Like, what were all those numbers? They should all be white derivative damage numbers. I think something's weird's happening. Her battle skill, yes, but but check this out. This is her. You will see her battle skill. This is her ultimate. Her battle skill will give us an icon when it pops up. Look at all those numbers. Look at all those numbers. Look at no battle skill, no battle skill. Now that's the battle skill. And that's only like 2,000. Some multiple hits of like 2,000. Because whenever a hero does their battle skill, you see the icon next to their level. Next to that, see right there? That's their battle skill going off. Now here's her ultimate. Her battle skill won't go off for a while now. And we see all these weird like pop-up numbers just, just blasting sometimes. There's her battle skill. And those are 2,000, so I don't know. Poison stacks can't crit. Poison stacks cannot crit. They, do, they will not be that gold number. And whenever somebody puts a poison up, we should not see gold numbers. I don't know what's happening. Maybe they bug together. Yeah, yeah, maybe they are. Something's, something's bugging her out to do crazy damage. See like that? See like that when you see a flow of them? Like you can't see how many there were? That's what's crazy. Oh, let me go to one time speed when she does that. Sometimes she'll just get a flurry. And remember, we're not looking for the 2000s. The 2000s are for sure her battle skill. I'm looking for those flurry of sometimes where we can't even can't even see how many numbers there are. Like that. Like that. Did you see that? What the hell was that? Okay, her battle skills out of the way. That's good. All right, let's go. Let's go. Give me some big hits here. It's about to end. There it goes. Boom boom boom. Like so now she's up to 1.1. 1. 1. She she basically doubled her damage. Doubled her damage by having Dench there throw those poisons up to trigger 
what she's doing. But if you saw all those hits, right? You saw those hits just now and you look at her skills, there's no way that that makes any sense from what she's supposed to be doing. She fires one shot that will crit at 500% of attack. We will see that as a gold number. After that though, for 10 seconds, all this is is derivative damage. Whenever somebody else puts up a poison or even, even if she puts it up, probably any means inflicted with a poison, a toxic blast occurs for this, which cannot crit. Derivative damage is not supposed to. Uh, moves Glitcher. Uh, no, no, I don't think it's Dench. It's it's anybody that can put up poisons. I don't think it's him that, that glitches her. Who else do we have that can put up a good amount of poisons? Uh, I was going to use Durango, but I think for Durango to put up poisons, we have to give him crit. He can do 100% chance to inflict two stacks of poisons. Oh, okay. So he hits three times. So he's definitely going to get up six poisons. So if we crit, we just get a recharge. This will do if we crit. Uh, when the hero's basic attacks skills trigger a critical hit, it has a 40% chance to inflict one stack. So he's going to get up six, whereas Dench is getting up... How many was Dench throwing up? Where'd he go? Dench is doing an area. So point every point eight. So every point eight seconds, he's putting up one stack. The area only lasts for four seconds. Okay, so we might actually get more from Durango. Right, let's do Durango. Give him the same gear. Give him some accuracy here. Where is it? There. Should have enough accuracy from that, but we'll give him this too. But his ultimate is faster. It doesn't line up. 23 seconds? Why is it faster? Ah, whenever he crit hits, he gets that ultimate increase. That's why right here. Three launches of the tag. Recharge the hero's ultimate gauge by 5% if a critical hit triggers. Do we have anything giving him extra crit? We do. We do that. Let's remove that. He's still got a base 12% though. So I'm going to have to manual his ultimate. Uh, how do I remove this? Dude, where's the remove button? We've got uh, accuracy. Okay. He's got accuracy lead. All right. Let's see. I don't think it's Dench. Dench I don't think it's Dench that glitches. Or I think um, either Dench is getting up an insane amount of poisons at that time. Okay. That was the battle skill for her for the 2000s. See, I think, I think they're crit. Look at all those. Look at all that. I think they're critting. I think something's happening weird where they're just doing some absolute bogus numbers. Okay, that's battle skill again. I get excited when I see those 2000s back to back, but that's not really the, the numbers we're looking for. We're looking for all those. Yeah, it is. It's every time. Like every time he look and then every time that uh, Durango would hit her with poisons, they're critting. They're critting and they're not supposed to be critting. And they're critting for like her base, a uh, base attack damage. Look, she's hitting for Fort, not there. They're hitting for the same 500% of attack. That's what's happening. You see that? Her 500% of attack is 5,000, uh, 7,000. Look, she hits her ultimate and it hits that one 500% of attack and it's like 7,000. Check it out. 7,000. And then he's putting up poisons and we're getting all these crits for 7,000. So they're not doing 40% of, of, they're not doing 40% of attack. <laughs> Derivative damage. They're doing 500% of attack that can crit is what they're doing. Boom, 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 seven, 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 seven. Yeah. So that's why she's, she's insanely bugged right now, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. User ASAP before patch. I doubt they'll patch it. 
do I know how it's calculated? Uh, well, it's 40% of attack. So whatever your, whatever your attack is, if your attack says, you know, whatever your, whatever your overall attack is. So 40% of that, but it's not supposed to be 500% and crit. It'd be 40% of attack of, of her attack. So this is what's her overall attack here. 1081 plus 777. So her current attack is 1858. And if we do that times 500, 500%, 500 that's 9,290 damage, right? Let me clear this out and I'll show you. So if we have her attack at 1081 plus 777. 1858 and we do that times what is it 500 percent so if you do 500 and you do it percentage wise that would be five so we're looking at total damage of 9298 mitigated by the dummies defense so the dummies defense is knocking this down to what was it seven thousand something so the dummies knocking that down to seven thousand so if we were to do derivative damage i don't think derivative damage is mitigated by defense so we just took her normal, what was it? 1858 attack, 40%. 743 is what we see. We should see a white number for 743. Um, not a not a crit number of 7,000. Yeah. I mean, 743 still sounds good. Every time we apply a, a crit, every time we apply a poison, it would just stack up that stat that damage though, right? Uh, what do you mean? Isn't it a completely different stat than damage? No, no, no. It converts right here. 40% of attack derivative damage right here. It tells you. It's a different type of damage that can't crit that is supposed to be affected by enlightenment. And I think that's why enlightenment's not working for her. I mean, it all makes sense because look, I tried her out with the same enlightenment gear to enhance her enlightenment. Plus she gets 25% additional enlightenment, but she's the only hero that can do a percentage base increase of enlightenment. Enlightenment on your chest piece, on your, on your rune is all flat, right? So since you can increase your overall enlightenment by 25%, that's pretty cool, especially when you have 300 enlightenment, which would then increase this derivative damage and would make her damage go up. But when I switch her to that gear, it makes her damage go down. So she's bugged. She's completely bugged to crit for 500% of her attack whenever somebody puts up a poison on the, the target she's attacking when she does this ultimate, when she marks them, which is skyrocketing her damage crazy high and nothing to do with enlightenment. So if you put enlightenment on her, it's not increasing her damage. It's not helping her out at all, actually, because she's bugged. Another hero that does derivative damage that may be bugged? Um, well, that's a good question. Is there another hero that, that does damage like this that could uh, increase it from attack to blow it up? Uh, there might be, right? Hers is different because she marks them and then waits for somebody else or, or even herself to put a poison up. Yeah, there could be somebody. But I've been, I've been testing them all, even if they do derivative damage with the same crit rate gear. So I probably would notice it. Got to sort my derivative damage out. I think I would have noticed another one that's doing this, you know, on the sheet, maybe. Because a lot of times I'll put notes to the side here that'll say uh, that they'll do much better with enlightenment. Like I'll put the notes to the side that I use the same gear that I use on everyone, but little increase with wild procs help. Okay. Little increase with frost debuff. Attacking within three tiles of the dummy increases your damage by 50%. So I made him, I attacked within three tiles. You know, I'll make notes over here to the side about any kind of variation there could be that I could think of at that time. Uh, well, here's, here's one we could test really easy, right? Here's another one we could test that all, does all derivative damage. So we were talking about him earlier. But I think I already tested him and it wasn't. But I want to test him on a full Dauntless team. I want to test this dude for sure on a full Dauntless team. But I'm pretty sure when I ran through here, we weren't seeing we weren't seeing any crit numbers. We'll tell right away. You can tell right away within the first ultimate whether 
whether it's working or not for any of your heroes if you have a 100% chance to crit. If we see that derivative damage is wigged out and it's actually critting, then you know right away. So for him, he's going to give himself and everybody else's Dauntless a buff to do derivative damage once he does this Vortex thing. Does he already have it up? I mean, I see him doing derivative damage. Because we got a 100% chance to crit. So, yeah, there's all that derivative damage. Why is it pulsating like that? I thought it was only like a 30% chance when he hits. Why was it pulsating earlier on a non-hit? Like right now, it's just kind of ticking like it's a like it's a poison. Poison's green numbers, but it's kind of like ticking in that fashion. But he's not he's not doing his basic attack. It's like a static field around him. Yeah, he's definitely not wig. He's definitely not broken though. This guy's not bugged out. If he was bugged out, we just see a whole bunch of gold numbers popping up instead. But I'm curious to see what that field was doing. Enhance all allies with lightning force, granting them blessings of the thunder. When launching a basic attack, all allies with blessing of thunder. See, it says when launching a basic attack. Oh, it's a thunder strike. So the thunder strike lasts. It's not a 30% chance to, to do one attack of 95% of attack. It's a it's a strike down that actually lasts for a couple seconds. That's interesting. 30% chance of summoning a lightning strike on the enemy dealing derivative damage but it doesn't say anything about see that's the way the <laughs> i feel like they're not really detailed sometimes right they were kind of different than because you could obviously see this wasn't one hit of 95 attack whenever he got lucky with a 30 percent chance on his basic attack you could see that it was something that lingers and keeps doing this 95 percent but sometimes the white number was a little bit different and it should always be the same 95% of attack won't change. Well, he was getting attack up buff, wasn't he? Basic attacks have a 30% chance to cause chain lightning to enemies. Well, there's only one lightning, so it's not going to bounce off. Okay, so that's the difference in numbers. He's got one that will do 95% with the Blessing of Thunder. And then he's got a basic attack here that will do 75%. Okay, so I'll work that out. And he does get an attack increase. Oh, and he gets a lightning shield. Okay, that's there, there. There's what it is. It's a lightning shield. This guy gets a lot of like I said. This is the only guy that I've seen that that one artifact would be warranted to level up and use. That one artifact is attack percentage and attack and the the incense burner, and that only does increases your derivative damage. He's the only guy that I've seen so far that everything is derivative damage. Like there's not one portion of anything else here. Everything is absolutely derivative damage. But he's got a lot of damage. Okay, let's check this out. Let's do this in. Let's take him into that alignment gear right after I do this attack. So we're going to attack the boss, the dummy here for five minutes. And I think I have him on the sheet already. Let me check. What's his name? Uh, Char? I thought it was like Char... Charlath? Chargul? I thought he was one of those. But I want to know, can this guy that we're testing right now supplement your Dauntless team instead of having Evelius, the legendary? The legendary one that if you have him booked, he's got a 40% chance whenever your Dauntless attack to fire off a, a hit. Try that derivative damage artifact on uh, Poison Hero. Oh, we're trying it right now. We're going to try it on this guy. This guy is nothing but derivative. You're talking about... Um, you're talking about on um, the legendary girl? Yeah, we've already done that. It doesn't... It doesn't... Her damage goes down. Way down. With... Uh, oh, try the derivative one. Not not enlightenment. Try the derivative on her and see if it, if it changes. Well, it wouldn't be a yellow number anymore. It would just be a white number that can't crit. And since you can't crit at all, her damage would go way down. You saw all that gold we were seeing, right? Like we saw a flurry of gold that we couldn't even distinguish what the numbers were because it was so many. 7,000, 7,000, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, you know, all this stuff go by. If we put that on her, we'd really gimp her because she wouldn't be able to crit at all the way she's bugging out. But on him, we can see what the damage increase is for him. Like uh, Shal Shaltar, that's the name, Shaltar? 
Shaltar. Okay, I did do him already. And I got really weak numbers for the gear that we have on, obviously, because we got a 100% chance to crit and we've got some attack. The attack's helping him out, but the crit's not helping him out at all. So I want to test this guy with enlightenment and see what the increase is. Because here's the real thing. He's doing 95% of attack. If we put a lot of enlightenment on him, we're dropping our attack down, right? Then... I mean, what's well, optimal gear for him then would be crit rate gloves, enlightenment. Okay, here's what I want to do. I want to try enlightenment chest piece versus attack chest piece. We'll put attack gloves on him and then enlightenment chest. And then we'll put attack gloves with attack chest. And I want to know what does better. Because if it's based off of derivative damage is based off of your maximum attack. If we put that chest piece into enlightenment, does it increase it or does our max attack now go down and we're not able to do as much derivative damage? It's bugged out. Maybe it will be worse. Well, it's bugged out in a way that's allowing her to crit hit is what I'm saying. So if you put the instant burner on her, the instant burner specifically says you can no longer crit with that hero at all with any of your moves. It basically nullifies crit on your hero. That's why I'm saying that instant burner isn't really good for a lot of heroes in this game unless all their abilities are pretty much derivative damage and they can't create it you know derivative cannot crit anyways so if we put that on her she would never she would not be able to now crit with any of her moves and her bugged out wouldn't be able to crit too so she would just be like doing way less damage because the way she's bugged out you want to crit that's what i'm saying you want to crit because when i put enlightenment on her it just dropped her damage see what old boy hits for. I had 297,361. So since he's got a little variation on his basic attack, it was somewhere around there. He's got a 30% chance to do damage, but we were still really close with the same gear. 297,361. So that's with crit rate, but we know that's no good for him. But I do want to try. This attack will help. I guess we'll just remove remove this. This gear doesn't matter for what I want to see. I want to attack. And then I want enlightenment for now. Then we're going to go attack, attack. Okay, this gear, this gear has attack percentage a little bit, but this one has too much enlightenment. Mm. Seven percent. Can I get an attack percentage that has a little bit of enlightenment? Okay, that's that's pretty comparable. But we got this flat attack. Anyways, that's the closest one we have. Okay, that'll work. We'll try that one on him next. Okay, let me see how much damage he does right here with enlightenment and attack percentage. And then I'm going to try it with attack and attack. Yo, yo, tier list. Okay, if you want to see like the breakdown of the tier list that I'm looking at right now, you have to do recipes. But this is at the bottom of every single one of my YouTube videos. Recipes. If you look in the notes of every single one of my YouTube videos, the pinned message right underneath the video, that uh, that link is there. And you can check out all the tier list there. And then I've got videos on all the heroes that you might have questions about. Well, a lot of them. Okay, so now his derivative damage is pretty high, right? Compared to what we saw before. I mean, we're taking for over 1,200 and something now. I mean, this guy in all attack gear should do really well. I don't know about the enlightenment portion of it yet. I kind of don't like... Like saying derivative damage, just say a skill can't crit. And then if it can be enhanced by enlightenment, do like you do for the other skills. Show... Show 30% of attack and then 1,000% of enlightenment. That's all you got to say, you know, just like you do right now for the other skills. Just show that. 
show that attack. Just like you look at Twitch and you see Twitch has 90% attack, 2000% of enlightenment. And then after that, this skill can't crit. And then you no longer need to even have the word derivative damage in your game. Because if we can increase his damage by enlightenment, we don't know what we don't know how much, right? We have no clue what it's gonna do. So right now I'm looking at 12, what was it, 1296? 729 a lot. And then, well, he's got an attack buff. That's right, he gets an attack buff every once in a while from his battle skill. Oh well, I'll just wait till he's done. I'll wait till he's done and I'll put the attack percentage on his chest and we'll see if it if it goes up or down. Any lightning or radiant hero do heal block? Uh, radiant Nessa. Nisa? I used to N E S S A. She can do heal block on her ultimate. And then anytime there's a debuff up on the enemy, she'll knock down their uh, ultimate gauge by 15%. Is one I can think of right now. For lightning? Hmm. Lightning? I don't know off the top of my head. This guy, no, that guy, no. Iola, no, she just does silences and stuns. And attack down. Oh, you can go in here and see that in the... Yeah, yeah, you can use debuffs, heal reduction. And I don't see any, I don't see any for enlightenment. You can actually go to the top there and there's a little sort feature that has a few debuffs and buffs, not all of them. And heal reduction is one of those. So when I type, when I when I click heal reduction and I look at lightning, mm -mm. I don't see any. Lightning is the only one actually missing heal reduction. It shows. Looks worse than the crit build. Well, the crit build had a more. Yeah, I wasn't trying to compare it to the crit build. I'm trying to compare this to, because the crit build had 336 attack on that artifact, on the crit artifact. And we took that away. We took away his 336 attack. If you wanted to compare it to that, we could have put him in a, in a weapon because the base weapon gives you like 336. I was just trying to compare it to what we're going to put the, the chest piece on. So 200 and 259,000. I should probably turn off his ultimate and we'd have cleaner runs. If I did this with his ultimate off, we'd be better because his ultimate then gives him that 30% chance to proc that. And then his his passive gives him a 30. This is a bad guy to actually test this out on. Do you have Elvis build on your main? No, I don't even have him on my main. I wish. This man can carry me through everything so far. I know he's amazing, isn't he? Slowing down everybody. I don't, I don't have him on my main, but I did get lucky enough to get Garius and to get Fur Bath which I have leveled up recently so I can do three waves and so I can also use them in the trials. Yeah, and for and uh Faraha, the fire one, yeah, nice. I haven't tested her, but she does before in beta she did really bad damage. But she can scaled out remove two buffs from the enemy and she has a really good resistance lead. So it's not like she's terrible. She has a lot of utility, but it did like her damage never seemed like it was there. We can test her right now on here. We'll test her on the test server against single target. I'm pretty sure it's going to be really low on single target. And then we can test her against AOE because she's got like that full move that goes across the board. But from what I remember in beta, even the AOE seemed weak with her. But we'll put her in the same gear we put everybody else in because for her, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a good comparison. I'll put her in that gear. And we'll test her out right after this. Okay, so we had 260,000. Is that what it was? I think he's he's already doing more damage. He's already doing far more damage. Which is straight up attack. Versus having enlightenment on. I think it's always a better a better deal to go anybody that has derivative damage or even poisons and stuff. I think it's better to go attack unless it's some somebody like Twitch it specifically says their skill does way more damage with enlightenment or the fire guy that does shields his name's what oh, apothis or something a 
Adolphus. Adolphus, yeah, yeah, he has a huge increase in doing enlightenment damage. So somebody like that, it makes per perfect sense. But all these other people, I don't think it makes any sense to do it with poison or derivative damage. Even though it says derivative damage is increased by that. It also says derivative damage is a percentage of your attack. 70% of your attack, 95% of your attack. So with the numbers here, it looks better. Wait, what was the number? It was 260,000. I don't know. Maybe it looks about the same then. I thought he was going to climb faster. But maybe he's going to be about the same damage. <laughs> maybe it's going to be relatively the same, but this is really bad testing because this guy has two moves that gives him a 30% chance to do additional damage. This is really bad. The numbers look lower though, don't they? Than the derivative? Uh, numbers seem less, actually. Yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, because we had 700 and something compared to six and we had 1200 and yeah, they do seem lower. You're right. They were 700 before and they were 1200 for the bigger ones. Yeah, they do seem lower. I don't know, man. It's such a, I mean, we're getting the same damage though, but it's such a, yeah, we're getting the same damage because of the, the variation. The 30% variation on his two moves. But they are lower. They they are definitely lower. You're right. I mean, there's only two places where we can get enlightenment. We can get it in the chest and we can get it on the left side rune, right? Like massive enlightenment. And then there's some artifacts. Uh, I don't know. I can't wait to test. I want to test him out on the full team. I want to test him on a full team of Dauntless in place of this guy right here for a budget a budget leader, you know, for him, if you have scrolls into him, 40% chance, whenever a dauntless does a basic attack, which all their attacks are basic, right? He he'll pop off. But if we don't have him and we've got this guy, can we make a budget dauntless team for something like vortex that really gets really good damage? I would think we could because dauntless have a 60% chance to do this ability. Oh, he's dauntless too. So he gets a 60% chance actually. Yeah. It's only a 30% chance here without books. Okay. So Dauntless get a 60% chance to do this lightning strike. So I'm thinking he could definitely be a budget of Elias. Um, do more without using his ultimate? No, 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 no. I just wanted to turn his ultimate off because it had a percentage chance for him to do damage in both those tests. But it doesn't matter. I think I think we saw that Enlightenment does more damage than, than attack just then though. Right, we had attack percentage chest piece, attack percentage gloves. We tried to get comparable pieces that didn't have too much attack or too much enlightenment, like this here. And we saw that the number was like a hundred percent different. So I mean it's it's more damage for derivative damage. So we'll have to test that out on a on a poisoner as well. That exact same thing. Let me try out the let me try out this fire lady. Let's see if this fire lady I need to put her on the list anyways, if I have her. I think I have her. I haven't tested her to put her on the list. Come on, don't I have her? Yeah, there she is. Let's see. Let's see if her damage is bad because she's got a lot of utility. She does. She's got a lot of good things. We we want that resistance lead when we're in um Ravitrix when we fight her and then Faye Meander. Although we can get gum later on. But that's at floor 60. Is that right for gum? Oh, that's what somebody mentioned earlier. They were talking about the labyrinth. Doesn't Faye Meander break off into another labyrinth? Another, that's right. How high do I have to get to do that? I need to do that on my main account. How high do I need to get to be in that new part of the Faye Meander? I forgot all about that. It's like a split off from it, right? It's a separate tab. Yeah, yeah, it's separate, right? But I can I do it right away? Because if so, I've forgotten totally about it. You're stuck on Fame Meander, but have you done the other Labyrinth tab to it? I'm only on stage 30 and I did it. You did it yesterday? Yeah, because I'm on stage what? Let me see. I'm on 31? Let me take a peek into this. I haven't even looked at the Labyrinth. Labyrinth of Curiosities, one and two. And you just hit enter? Man, they need to make that more... 
they need to make it to where like when you go in there you actually can see a clear a clear difference there in tabs because at level seven you get this new placeholder this new avatar at level 12 you get this frame it must be really hard then to do a labyrinth labyrinth of curiosity stage one enter is it more difficult I mean, you just walk, you walk up to the same stuff. Like I just walked up to this group of five that are level 65. Doesn't look like it's that difficult. Let me put these people in, get a healer in here. Yeah. Two healers, two DPS tank. Okay. Go for it. No gear on them. Ah, it doesn't matter. Uh, not, not to start with. It's not difficult. Yeah. They're level 65 here. I just forgot all about this. We'll open up a new tab for it. Okay. So we, let me hit auto here. So we do Fey meander and then we open up a new one for this labyrinth, which isn't any different at all. I was thinking it's going to be like a real labyrinth or have some kind of different play style to it, but it looks like it's the same old thing. Although I just got some nice gold. Yeah, they're all level 65 in here still. Yeah, I bet it, I bet it ramps up quick, like really quick, right? So if we just double her damage right now, we're looking at 300,000. 300,000 on a single target for everything that she does isn't, isn't terrible. It's right there with the ice MC, kind of right there with support, kind of support people are. I mean, it's nowhere near the top people. So what are we going to do about uh, Vakana? Is, uh, is she, should we do a, a bugged video? And if, and if there are other heroes like that, let us know. I think we should do a video on her showing what she's doing. And we should put the word out there to ask if there's any other heroes that do that. That are kind of bugged in the way she is. If that's what's happening with her. I mean, that's what I saw. And if somebody could lead us to another, another hero that can do what she's doing. One that's more accessible, like an epic. Then we could all play around with it. Thing on level six already, and uh, me to use only your fire heroes. Oh, that's right. It gives you stipulations. It makes the requirements like you can only use like one legendary, and some of them, like you said, only only fire heroes. Okay, that's cool. It's cool. You got Fey Meander to use all your heroes, and then as you do Fey Meander, it opens up some of these floors to where then you can only fight them with restrictions. I like it. I like it. As long as the rewards are good. I just picked up some nice rewards in here. If she's that bug, she would be stupid against the... She already... Yeah, yeah. She is. She is stupid against the boss. If you got another good poisoner that can pull off some good damage, even if you had to use... Um, well, you want somebody to put up... You want somebody to put up poisons when she has her ultimate up. So... Um, as long as they fit in with that and do good damage themselves, you can't have somebody like doing no damage. As long as they do well damage, good damage themselves, then yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, Durango, if we put him, if we outfitted Durango properly, then he would be a good choice for it, I'm sure. The other single target poisoners that we have on our list to do the most damage for single target is this guy, but he doesn't do enough poisons. He does derivative damage himself, but to, to enhance her, we need somebody to put poisons up when she does her ultimate. And this guy doesn't do it. He only does it on his, his battle skill, and it's not very many. So I would normally pick him because he has the highest single target damage that I've tested so far out of all the rares with poisons, but he just doesn't apply enough poisons. Oh, this guy did a, this guy did a good job. Horus did a good job at AoE. Did he do a really good job at single, though? Oh, shit. Do you guys remember what her her number was? Oh man. Her number was what? Did anybody remember her number? 300? Was it 300? But can he we need somebody that can do really good single target but apply a lot of poison. So better than enlightenment with uh, attack here. We didn't we didn't check it. Cuz there's a lot with Durango. There's a lot. Like if we want him to crit, then he's got a chance then to apply a poison for 15 seconds. If we don't want him to crit, then we just kind of like ignore this for the most part, which I don't think it's that important for him to crit to get this. But if he crits here, he gets a turn meter increase. 
ultimate energy increase 5% if a crit hits, and this could be 15%. This is three attacks. So this could get him to his ultimate faster all the time. For her, which one? For which one? Or with attack and high critical rate. Um, we didn't test that either. We didn't we didn't really go far into poisons, but that would be a better one for us to test that on. Durango would be to see the difference. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be enlightenment, right? And it's a little bit hard. To try with him as well. Let's see. Who's got an accuracy lead? Oh, oh, here we can get a little bit of accuracy from her. Okay, we got our accuracy lead. Okay, he's got it. He's got attack, attack. Oh, wait, this doesn't give either one. This doesn't give attack or... Okay, all this does is increase our chance to land the debuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's equip this for sure. Now we don't even need her. Not that she's doing... She's just standing there anyways. Okay, here we go. So we'll put enlightenment on after this, the same exact that we did before with the last guy. But he should have 100% chance now to apply these poisons. So it should be very consistent. Here he's got a 50% chance. Well, it'll be a little, little consistent right here. Let's see what his total damage is. Now, this is all attack. Attack gloves, attack chest. And then we'll do the enlightenment chest. But it should it should increase by enlightenment. But how much? We'd have to look at the stacks. Like, here's three stacks ticking for 828. So remember that. Three stacks, 828. Okay, we can back out now, actually. three. Where, where do I write this down? Three stacks, 828. 828. All right. We just got to hope he does three stacks again. Pretty consistent so we can see that. 828. Maybe this goes up to about a thousand, you think? Come on, give me three stacks. Just three. There we go. 948. 948. Yeah, yeah. 948 for sure. So we're looking at a difference of... Where is that? Calculator. Oh, 948. So 120. That, that enlightenment increased to 120. Yeah, yeah. Definitely an increase. But overall damage, what do you think? Because it's lowering his basic attack damage. It's lowering his... Right? He's not getting any enlightenment increase on his basic attacks. But what about that right there? See all these white numbers? I mean, that is an increase in poison damage, but does it, does it benefit us to lower our basic attack and our normal attacks because he's still hitting right here like these white numbers he's still hitting normal attacks oh, we can let it run we can let it run for five minutes and see how it compares but we did see that that chest piece increased it by 120 on those ticks for three Stage five, actually in Labyrinth, we can do only, uh, oh, stage five is the highest we can do right now. I'm only on stage one. I just completed stage one while I was talking to you guys about it. Stage one was very, very easy. But I'm sure I'm about to hit some requirements where I got to use all the same kind of like fire heroes, like you said, or, uh, only four legendaries can be deployed. Uh oh, I'm on stage two and only three legendaries can be deployed. I'm in trouble. <laughs> The whales are like, oh man, I can't even do this. I didn't even level up anything but my legendaries. What do you mean only three? Three, three could probably beat stage two. Just three. Easily. All right, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to get my drink. And just give me one minute. Stretch my legs really quick.
Dinty pulled in 346,955. Let me write this down. Where are you, Dinty? Three, four, six, nine, nine, five. Okay, that was with the enlightenment, right? Yeah, enlightenment on. Okay, I'm gonna put the attack back on him. Although, if he was level 100, his attack would be higher too. His enlightenment one be higher because that doesn't go up, but his attack would be higher because that goes up at level 100. All right, does the attack gear work out better? Because basic attacks, basic attacks add up to a lot of damage. I mean, he's always right. Look, look, every two seconds, whatever his is, two seconds, 2.5. The 65 kicked me always out. What's going on? Oh, you have to do more Faye? Yeah, yeah, I should do more Faye. He's 60, he's 64, 75. It's pretty good. I like Faye. I think Faye is a really cool move, a really cool mode in this game, right? To fight all those different kind of cool teams. And then we can bring in those people that really lock them up. I don't know if you've been bringing in something like uh, Iola or anybody who can do a lot of stuns, freezes. And then once we get that legendary artifact, legendary gear from Grave of Rot to where ultimates have a chance to stun every time they do damage. I think going through Faye Meander is going to be a lot easier. Ancient Battlefield 7 is down. Yay, man. Congrats. Are you using legendary gear yet? At least you're ready for when legendary drops happen. And in there, once we do, even if you do eight in Ancient Battlefield or the other one with the Phoenix, eight still drops legendaries all the time. And then a whole bunch of the purple so we can sell them. I can't wait to get legendary runes, man. To get legendary runes for our guys, along with all that legendary gear. Healing amount is unstoppable. Nice. And his ability to remove a debuff. That's what makes him really good. Well, if we double this damage, it's going to be less. If we doubled what he's got right now, he'd be at 300,000, which would be less than... 346,000. So yeah, enlightenment enlightenment overall looks like it's increasing his damage by a bit. 50,000. 50,000 currently, but like I said, if he was level 100 though, his attack would be higher. So this attack percentage gear would be increasing it more. And the light his enlightenment won't be higher at level 100, only his attack. So it might kind of equal out to be about the same. But on a high defense target, his attacks aren't going to do that much where these poisons will do more. So, I don't know. For the battle pass, is 300 points per... What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't done any of your... Are, are you not finished with your battle pass? How many days do you have left? Don't, don't you only have like 24 hours? I finished mine quick. Once that new week came where they're 300 each, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to finish the battle pass. I was scared they weren't going to give us enough quest to do it you know i was like these guys aren't gonna pull that a fast one on us are they but then i saw how many points we get and i was able to knock it out really fast three shagruls jump on you if three jump on you to do their battle skill and then their ultimates you're gonna go down pretty quick Yeah, Enlightenment increases his damage by 50,000, for what I can see. For Dents. Is there a way to see how much defense the Vortex boss has? No, I haven't I haven't found a way to see what kind of stats the Vortex boss has at all. Any of you guys know anywhere? I can see teams that fight against him and stuff, but I can't see anywhere where it tells us his stats. Uh, maybe 40, 40. So it was only 35,000 more. And then I bet when he's level 100, that gap's going to be even smaller. Uh, we'll have to test it on the Vortex boss. We're definitely going to have to test Enlightenment and Attack on the Vortex boss to see the difference. 
on, on a real target. Because I don't I don't trust this dummy when it comes to poisons. <laughs> I can't even see his stats, you know? Like, what's this guy got? I don't know what kind of defense or HP this, ha this guy has here. It's not sure. All right, guys. I've been on for three hours and 24 minutes. I'm going to go eat some food, man. I'm hungry as can be today. I don't know why I'm so hungry. But uh, I did some laundry this morning. So I'm going to go check on laundry. My kids. See what they're about when they come home today. My wife's could actually get a half day. So she should be home in like an hour from now. But I appreciate all your love. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. The document is down below. If you haven't played Dragon Air Sonic Gods, make sure you come over here and download the game from the official website right here with this link. Come and join us. Oh, that didn't work. Hold on one second. Yeah, come and join us. Come play the game with us. It's a lot of fun. Obviously, you've seen what's been going on. We've been doing a lot of testing here at the end, but a lot of fun things to do. And like everybody said, it doesn't feel like a normal mobile game. It just doesn't feel like a mobile game, especially if you're running around and doing all this fun stuff. Waiting on my videos. What videos are we going to do for tonight? Uh, I feel like I, I knocked out some three videos last night, and I just don't even... Testing enlightenment on the boss. I could go back and fight the boss and do enlightenment testing on the boss. We could do a video on that broken legendary to see if there's any other heroes out there that are broken like that, that they could lead us to. <laughs> what else? What else? What else do we need to, what else do we need to get into? Teams, uh, tier list for all bunch of different stuff, I guess. Do corrupt fields yet? I haven't done it. I've only done one of the three wave battles in corrupt fields on my main account. And then I got to another three wave battle to where we have to fight like a boss and then a couple other waves. So I just was waiting till I get legendary gear. Once we have legendary gear, I think we're going to blow past that. Vortex theory crafting for rares and epics. Yeah, yeah, we can start doing that. Taking whole teams. That's why I'm trying to do everybody at level 90 so we can then take them to 100. And then not theory crafting. We'll, we'll put them in there. Any kind of low level teams with rares and epics we'll do for poison. We'll do for Dauntless, which look, like I said, this guy would be a centerpiece for. Now that we have his numbers, I can take him to 100, right? I, I got no issues. I mean, I don't have enough to take everybody to 100 right now. I'll have to farm, but we'll take all these guys to 100 and then we'll, we'll put them in the actual vortex boss with gear because I need to go farm a little bit more legendary gear and we'll do that. And then we'll do it with the, um, the legendary equivalent, right? So that if you have any of these legendaries, you can put them in those teams. So we'll bring out the rares. We'll bring out the epics. For poison, for dauntless, uh, vortex boss with these guys. I'll be honest, I don't really know of any of these guys that could do well on the, well on the vortex boss in the rare and in the epic category. He's AOE. She's kind of frontal AOE. She doesn't work out without having multiple people attack her. Martina, uh, single target and AOE is fine there. They're just not going to do a lot of damage. They're not really built for single target damage. And then if you go down here, he's AOE damage. Better at AOE damage. You know what I'm saying? There's nobody that's really a, a single target killer from all the testing that we've done for a rally. We could bring in a lot of summons and epics and rares and try those out on, on the actual boss. Not on the dummy, on the actual vortex boss. And then we could do the legendary equivalent to that. And for frost, we could bring in we got some frost ones we could try out, right? We got Usha. We have Zethos. Single target damage. We could get up frost up with her a lot if, if we needed it. I'm not saying we need it. I don't think they're going to be banging though. I think poison, dauntless so far, and then wild for the boss. And Frost, I don't, I don't know. We could pull some things off with Frost. Yeah, Wild, sure. I don't, Radiant looks like the only one that really doesn't have a, a good advantage for doing rares and epics on the Vortex boss. I haven't tried them yet. We're going to have to try it all out, all out on the, on the boss. We've, we've done a lot of them at 90 with the same gear. So now we need to take all those 90s to 100s, do teams, and then do team comps for, and, and take them over to the Vortex boss. Not here. Not here. We'll get away from this dummy now once we had everybody tested out at 90. We'll get away from him and we'll get to 100 and we'll go with legendary gear and we'll take that same legendary gear and try to put it on the equivalent of those other teams or if we need to, you know, no, no, no. We'll just we'll put them all with the appropriate gear. 
because enlightenment we're going to need that with the poison people we try out so we're going to do enlightenment plus attack but the other ones we'll we'll try to we'll, we'll try to gear them comparable so the two teams aren't too out of whack we'll do something yeah and i need to test out zethos i actually haven't even tried him for single target damage yet and here for zethos so i got a lot of that to do all right guys i'm gonna take out i'm gonna take off take out i'm gonna take out take off you know off and off and out but you guys have a wonderful rest of your day is gordy on who's streaming this game who's streaming dragon air right now let me see twitch do gaming yeah gordy's on we got summit skump bujira heartless halos on i saw um sniper monkeys on doing stream raiders nice all right we'll go see gordy duke have a wonderful day brizzen thanks so much for hanging out with me appreciate it we're gonna raid over here to gordy see what he's about great guy knows a lot about the game vortex theory crafting yeah it's gonna be fun i want to know what kind of heroes will do the damage we need so that we can make some comparable some competent teams so that we won't have to waste our resources you know guys i'll see you tomorrow i'll be on the same exact time tomorrow is gonna be a great day because we're gonna be farming legendary gear on my free-to-play account if i can't do nine we already did nine today though oh i could do a video on fine-tuning nine We'll do nine tomorrow. We'll get all that gear and uh, tomorrow's gonna be a fun day. I'll see you guys soon. Can I hear him? Uh, what's up, dude? Doing some trials?